pray for Dr. Sam. We pray for Dr. Lisa. We thank God for Joshua and Susan. We thank God for the extended family members. We pray that you will continue, Lord, to pour out your grace upon them. Strength be given to them, Lord. The peace that passeth all understanding be given to them, Lord. In everything you take glory and honor. We humble ourselves at your feet this morning. We pray for our worship team who is going to lead us in a time of worship. Lord, we pray for every ministry that takes place this morning. Through it all, you may be glorified and you may be magnified. We thank you, we praise you. And in Jesus' name, we pray.
can face tomorrow because he Because you live, we too can live, O oh God. We give you glory and honor and praise this morning. And in Jesus' name, amen. You know, one of the favorite songs of Andy was Ende Deivam Mahatatul, Ardravanai, Jeevi Kimbol, Sadhunyani, Shoni Tannil, Kleshi Paan, Indum Khairi Milla, Yen Ende Ullam Chollunum. That's the reason. And he wanted Susan to sing that song, and I know it's really hard for her to sing this morning, but... That's a beautiful song, and we were able to sing that song uh, as Andy was in the last week a uh, couple of times. We thank God for that opportunity that the Lord gave us to be able to, uh, to sing songs of worship. Amen. Hallelujah. And she loved those, those opportunities. 
whether it be with the mouth uh, uh, organ or it, whether it be us just singing and rejoicing in, in the presence of God. And we thank God for those wonderful moments, the cherish, that moments that we cherish this morning. And uh, that is uh, such an amiable, um, you know, character. And that doesn't come overnight. Uh, so as I was reflecting upon her life, you know, I came to the conclusion that it is because of her upbringing. And that fact that she grew up in perhaps a parsonage where she had seen and experienced God in so many different uh, uh, levels, so as to speak. And in her own suffering that she may have gone through as being a pastor's child, uh, she was able to, you know, build on that over a period of time. And that was because she knew what God's love was. You see, you're not able to give God's love to others unless you yourself don't experience that. And this is, an, a, a, you know, a testament of what we ourselves have experienced, that she was able to pour out to, into others' lives because she herself was filled with God's love. And so we are strengthened this morning, even as we reflect upon her life, uh, that we were all able to share as a church uh, body, as a, uh, as a life group body, and to see how she has been able to touch many of us. And so um, I also bring um, my condolences from my dad. As you know, um, their family was very uh, well connected through uh, the church organizations that they are her brother and uh, everyone else that were. Uh, and so he also sends his love and regards as well. And as I read through this um, uh, First Thessalonians uh, chapter 4, verse 13, it was so wonderful to see Pastor uh, Pradap last night uh, speak to us also from that same exact verse and he had given uh, quite a bit of exhortation and what an honor for him to have also spoken to that uh, so here's the eternal word of god which is uh, reminding us and encouraging us about the coming of the lord verse number 13 down but we do not want you to be uninformed brothers but those who are asleep that you may not grieve at others who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep. For this we declare to you by a word from the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a cry of command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the sound of the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, we are left, will be caught up together, with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will always be with the Lord. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. May God add blessings to the, adding of, uh, to the reading of his text. And uh, we know that uh, God has a great plan for each one of you. And for the fact that um, she'd been a servant who and her generation had been serving the Lord, we're able to reap those benefits and those blessings God has for each one of you from generation to generation to generation. Let's trust in that great God that we serve. I'm the, like everybody, like a pastor said, English English so, in the Kunimol and Yan Ingan of Vidu on the Yan North, and Niki Mumbai. In Kendo Pareno Narayama, even when the or unjet to paper Yan Yedivich. But Yanun Kondomilla, Yamber 
മോളോട് എൻ്റെ മോൾ പറഞ്ഞ് എഴുതി വെക്കും അമ്മി ഞാൻ പറഞ്ഞ് എഴുതി വെക്കുന്നില്ല എന്തോ വരുന്നു എൻ്റെ വായിൽ വരുന്നതെല്ലാം ഞാൻ പറയാൻ പോവാം അധികം സമയമില്ല എന്നാലും ഞാൻ ചുരുക്കി പറയാൻ വേണ്ടി ഞാൻ ട്രൈ ചെയ്യാം കുഞ്ഞുമോൾ ഉണ്ടായപ്പോൾ തൊട്ട് നിങ്ങളെല്ലാവരും കുഞ്ഞുമോളെന്ന് വിളിക്കുന്നു കുഞ്ഞുമോളെന്ന് പേര് വെച്ചത് ഞാനാ കുഞ്ഞുമോട് മൂത്തത് കുഞ്ഞുമോനാ അമ്മച്ചിരിയൊക്കെ പറഞ്ഞു മമ്മി കുഞ്ഞുമോനല്ലേ മൂത്തത് അപ്പോൾ ഇളയത് വെരി ബ്യൂട്ടിഫുൾ കേളി ഹെയർ സ്മോൾ ടൈനി ബേബി വീട്ടിൽ വന്നപ്പോൾ ഞാൻ പറഞ്ഞു അവളെ കുഞ്ഞുമോളെന്ന് വിളിക്കാം ഓക്കെ മോളെ നമുക്ക് കുഞ്ഞുമോളെന്ന് വിളിക്കാം ബട്ട് അപ്പച്ചൻ വേറെ പേരിടും ഡെഡിക്കേഷൻ ചെയ്യുമ്പോൾ അങ്ങനെ ഇന്നലെ ഫാസ്റ്റർ പ്രതാപ് സിംഗ് പറഞ്ഞതിൻ്റെ കൂട്ട് കുഞ്ഞുമോടെ പേര് അന്നമ്മ എലിസബത്ത് കയ്യാലേത്ത് അതാ അവിടെ റിയൽ ബിഫോർ മാരേജ് പേര് എൻ്റെ പേരും കെ കെ മേരി എന്നാണ് എല്ലാവരും പറയും കെ കെ മേരി കെ കെ ജോൺ കെ കെ ഡാനി ഇങ്ങനെ എല്ലാം കെ കെയാണ് ഇപ്പോൾ ഇവിടെ കെ കെ പറഞ്ഞാൽ ഇവിടുത്തെ വേറെയാ സോ എനിവേ ഞാൻ പറയാം എനിക്ക് എങ്ങനെ വരുന്നോ ഞാൻ പറയുവാ എന്നെ ക്ഷമിക്കണം ഞാൻ എന്താ വേലും തെറ്റ് പറഞ്ഞാൽ ഐ എം നോട്ട് ഇൻ ദ മൂഡ് ടു സേ എനിത്തിങ് ബട്ട് ഐ ഹാവ് ലാഡ് ആ ഒത്തിരി കാര്യമുണ്ട് ഇന്ന് മുഴുവനും ഇരുന്നാലും നിങ്ങൾ പാനൊക്കത്തില്ല അതുപോലെ എഴുപത്തിരണ്ട് വർഷമുള്ള എക്സ്പീരിയൻസ് അവിടെ കൂടെ മേ ബി ഫോർ ഫൈവ് ഇയേഴ്സ് എൻ്റെ ട്രെയിനിങ് സ്കൂൾ ടീച്ചർ ട്രെയിനിങ് സ്കൂൾ ത്രീ ഇയേഴ്സ് ദെൻ ഐ കെം ഹിയർ അങ്ങനെ കുറച്ച് നാൾ പിരിഞ്ഞിരുന്നുള്ളൂ അല്ലാതെ എൻ്റെ ഗ്രേസനും എൻ്റെ കുഞ്ഞുമോൾ ജനിച്ച് രണ്ട് വയസ്സ് സെയിം ഡേറ്റ് സെയിം മന്ത് ഇയേഴ്സ് ഓൺലി ടു ഇയേഴ്സ് ഡിഫറെ ബർത്ത്ഡേ സെലിബ്രേറ്റ് ചെയ്യുകയാണെങ്കിൽ രണ്ടു പേരുടെയും ചേർത്ത അന്നത്തെ കാലത്ത് ഇപ്പോഴത്തെ കൂട്ട് കേക്കും കേക്കും ഒന്നുമില്ല എൻ്റെ അമ്മച്ചി വളരെ നല്ല ഒരു പായസം ഉണ്ടാക്കും പിന്നെ അപ്പച്ചൻ പോയി ഇറച്ചി മേടിച്ചോണ്ട് വന്നാൽ അന്നൊരു ബിരിയാണി ഉണ്ടാക്കും ഇതാണ് ഞങ്ങളുടെ വലിയ ഫീസ്റ്റ് ഫ്രണ്ട്സിനെ എല്ലാം വിളിക്കും അമ്മച്ചി നല്ല ബേഷായിട്ട് പായസം ഉണ്ടാക്കി ഞങ്ങൾ അങ്ങനെ അങ്ങ് അതാ ഞങ്ങളുടെ ബർത്ത്ഡേ ഗിഫ്റ്റ് പിന്നെ അപ്പച്ചൻ പുത്തൻ തുണിയും മേ ഉടുപ്പും മേടിച്ചു തരും എനിവേ ഞാൻ എളുപ്പം തീർക്കാൻ നോക്കാം അങ്ങനെ എൻ്റെ കുഞ്ഞുമോളെ ഞാൻ കുഞ്ഞു തൊട്ട് ഞാൻ അവൾ ഒത്തിരി ഫാസ്റ്റാണ് ഒരു ദിവസം എന്തോ ഞാൻ എൻ്റെ ഹോംവർക്ക് ചെയ്തുകൊണ്ടിരിക്കുമ്പോൾ കുഞ്ഞുമോളെ അവിടെ എൻ്റെ അരിക്ക ഇരുത്തിയിട്ട് ഞാൻ ഹോംവർക്ക് ചെയ്യുക എങ്ങനെ ഈ നാല് കാലും കൊണ്ട് ഏറി ഞങ്ങൾക്കൊരു സ്റ്റെപ്പുണ്ട് മോളിൽ പോകാൻ ആ സ്റ്റെപ്പിൻ്റെ മോളിൽ ഇങ്ങനെ ഇരിക്കാൻ ഒരു സ്ഥലമുണ്ട് അവിടെ പോയി ഇരുന്നിട്ട് അന്ന് ചിരിയുക ഞാനത് എവിടെ ഈ ശബ്ദം വരുന്നു പോയി നോക്കിയപ്പോൾ മോളിലുണ്ട് അവൾ വീണ എനിക്കാണ് വഴക്ക് കിട്ടുന്ന അടിയും കിട്ടുന്നു സോ ഞാൻ ഓടിപ്പോയി അവളെ എടുത്തോണ്ട് വന്ന് പിന്നെയും എൻ്റെ അരിക്ക് ഇരുത്തിയിട്ട് ഞാൻ എൻ്റെ ഹോംവർക്ക് ചെയ്യുമ്പോൾ പിന്നെയും ഉണ്ടല്ലോ ഇതിനെക്കാട്ടി ഫാസ്റ്റായിട്ട് അവിടെ പോയിട്ട് എന്തോ അറിയാം പട 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 പടാന്ന് താഴെ വന്ന് എളുപ്പം അങ്ങ് വീണു എന്നിട്ട് അവൾ കരഞ്ഞില്ല ഞാൻ ഓടിപ്പോയി എടുത്തിട്ട് എന്തോ പണ വല്ല മുട്ടിയോ കിട്ടി ഇല്ല 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 അതാ എപ്പോൾ അപ്പോഴും അവൾ ചിരിയ എൻ്റെ കുഞ്ഞുമോൾ എപ്പോഴും ചിരിയ ചിരിച്ച് 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 ഒടുവിൽ അവൾ ഇങ്ങനെ അവിടെ സെവൻറ്റി ടു ബർത്ത്ഡേ ഞങ്ങൾ അവിടെ വീട്ടിൽ പോയി എന്നെ എൻ്റെ കൊച്ചുങ്ങൾ എന്നെ വിടത്തില്ല എങ്ങും വിടത്തില്ല ആരും വീട്ടിലും വരാനൊക്കത്തില്ല ഞങ്ങൾ അങ്ങനെ വളർന്നതല്ല ഞങ്ങൾ എല്ലാവരോടും പോയി ഇത് ചെയ്ത് അങ്ങനെ ഒത്തിരി സോഷ്യലാണ് ബട്ട് ഇപ്പം ഈ കൊറോണ വൈറസ് ഒന്നും ഏതാണ്ട് ഒരു വൈറസ് വന്നപ്പോഴത്തേക്ക് എല്ലാവരും ഷട്ട് ആവണം വീട്ടിലിരിക്കണം എങ്ങും പോയി കാണണം ആഴ്ചയിൽ ഒരിക്കാൻ ഞങ്ങൾക്ക് പോയി കണ്ടില്ല എൻ്റെ ഭർത്താവ് നല്ല സുഖമായിട്ടിരുന്നപ്പോൾ ഇപ്പം ഞാൻ പറഞ്ഞാലും ഉടനെ എത്രയും ദൂരമായാലും എന്നെ കൊണ്ടുപോവും ഞങ്ങൾ പോവും അവിടെ പോയിട്ട് എൻ്റെ സാമ ന്യൂയോർക്കിൽ കുഞ്ഞുമോൾ കല്യാണം കഴിച്ചു കൊണ്ടുവന്നു ആദ്യമേ പരീക്ഷ എഴുതി പാസ്സായി പാസ്സായിട്ട് അവരെന്തോ ഞങ്ങളെ കാണാൻ വന്നപ്പോൾ സാമിന് അവിടെ ഇഷ്ടപ്പെട്ടില്ല ന്യൂയോർക്ക് ഇഷ്ടപ്പെട്ടില്ല ഇവിടെ വന്നപ്പോൾ ഇവിടെ നല്ല വേദർ എല്ലാം നിറയെ മലയാളികൾ അന്ന് ഇത്രയും മലയാളികൾ പാസ്റ്റ് ടൈറ്റസ് എന്ന് പറഞ്ഞ ഒരു അച്ചായൻ ഉണ്ടായിരുന്നു പുള്ളിക്ക് ഉള്ളായിരുന്നു ഒരു സഭ ഒരു നാലഞ്ച് പേര് ഞങ്ങൾ പുള്ളിയുടെ ഫാമിലി പിന്നെ രണ്ട് മൂന്ന് ഫാമിലി ഇതാ ഞങ്ങളുടെ ചർച്ച് പിന്നെ ഞങ്
ഞങ്ങളെല്ലാവർക്കും എല്ലാ ഞങ്ങൾക്കെന്നല്ല ആ ഡാലസിലുള്ള മിക്കവാറും ആളുകൾക്ക് പുള്ളി സഹായിച്ചിട്ടുണ്ട് എൻ്റെ കുഞ്ഞുമോളി പറഞ്ഞു ഞങ്ങൾ ആ പുള്ളി കൺവെൻഷൻ നടത്തിയാൽ ഞങ്ങൾ മൂന്ന് പേരും ഞങ്ങൾ കാഞ്ചിപുരം ലേഡീസാണ് ഇവിടെ വിളിക്കുന്നത് എപ്പോൾ എവിടെ പോയാലും ഞങ്ങൾ കാഞ്ചിപുരം കൊടുത്തോണ്ട് നല്ല ബേഷായിട്ട് ഞങ്ങൾ മൂന്ന് പേരും പോകും എൻ്റെ കുഞ്ഞുമോൾ സാരി കൊടുക്കുന്ന ആർഗണ്ടി ആർഗണ്ടി എന്ന് പറഞ്ഞാൽ കോട്ടൺ വെരി സ്റ്റിഫായിട്ടുള്ള ഒരു സാരിയാണ് അതെന്ത് ബേഷായിട്ട് കൊടുത്ത് നിങ്ങൾക്ക് നിങ്ങൾ കണ്ടിരുന്നെങ്കിൽ പറയും ഒരു ബൊമ്മയുടെ കൂട്ട് ഒരു ഡാളിൻ്റെ കൂട്ട കൊടുത്തോണ്ട് ഇങ്ങനെ 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 കുളിക്കും നടക്കും ഞങ്ങൾ പറയും ഒത്തിരി കുളുക്കണ്ട കല്യാണമാകാത്ത കൊച്ച വല്ലവരും പോയാൽ എൻ്റെ ഭർത്താവിന് വിഷവുമാണ് ഓ ആരും വരത്തില്ല എൻ്റെ ഭർത്താവ് ഇങ്ങനെ ഈകളിൻ്റെ കൂട്ട ഇവർ എവിടെയെങ്കിലും പോയാൽ നോക്കിക്കൊണ്ടിരിക്കുന്നത് ആരേലും ഭർത്താവിനെ പറഞ്ഞാൽ ആരാ എന്തുവാ ഞാൻ പറഞ്ഞു ലീവ് ദ മലോൺ എൻ്റെ അപ്പച്ചനൊന്നും ഇങ്ങനെ ചെയ്തില്ല പിന്നെന്തോ ഒരുപാടിയോ അല്ലുവെങ്കിൽ എൻ്റെ ഭർത്താവ് ഇവരെ രണ്ടു പേരെയും ഒത്തിരി ഓൺ പിള്ളേരുടെ കൂട്ട് ഇപ്പൊ വരാൻ വയ്യാതെ സുഖമില്ലാതെ കിടപ്പാ എന്നോട് പറഞ്ഞു കുഞ്ഞുമോടെ കാതി പോയി പറയണോ അച്ഛാ എൻ ലവ്സ് യു ഈസ് ഗോയിങ് ടു മിസ് ഹർ സോ മച്ച് ഈ ഫാമിലി ഞങ്ങൾ സാമ ഇവിടെ വന്ന് പിന്നെ ഞങ്ങൾ അങ്ങോട്ട് പോവാ ഇങ്ങോട്ട് പോവാ ഞങ്ങൾ എന്ത് ട്രാവൽ ഒന്നിച്ച് ഒന്നിച്ച് കൂടുമ്പോൾ ഞങ്ങൾ ചിരിക്കാത്ത ദിവസം ഇല്ല അതുപോലെ നല്ല ഫൺ ഞങ്ങൾക്ക് എല്ലായിടത്തും പോയി എൻ്റെ കുഞ്ഞുമോൾ കൂട്ടാരും വരത്തില്ല എനിക്ക് എൻ്റെ സിബ്ലിങ് എൻ്റെ ഇളയത് ആറു പേരുണ്ട് ആറു പേരെ ഞാനാ നോക്കിയത് അമ്മച്ചി ഹോസ്പിറ്റലിൽ പോയി ഒരു ബ്രദർ ചോദിച്ചു അമ്മച്ചി ഹോസ്പിറ്റലിൽ പോയി വരുമ്പോൾ ഒരു കൊച്ചിനെയും കൊണ്ടുവരും അപ്പോൾ ഒരു ബ്രദർ ചോദിച്ചു ഈ അമ്മച്ചിക്ക് പോ വരുമ്പോൾ എല്ലാവരെയും കൊണ്ടുവരുന്നു അങ്ങ് എന്തിനാ ഓരോന്ന് ഓരോ നേട്ടാണ് എനിവേ എവറി ടു ഇയേഴ്സ് ത്രീ ഇയേഴ്സിന് ഓരോ ബേബിയാണ് കാരണം ആരാ നോക്കുന്ന മൂത്ത ഞാൻ സ്കൂളിലും പോകണം ചർച്ചിൻ്റെ കാര്യത്തിൽ അപ്പച്ചൻ ഹെൽപ്പ് ചെയ്യണം പാട്ട് പാടണം അങ്ങനെ പിന്നെ അത് കഴിഞ്ഞ് ഈ പിള്ളേരെ നോക്കണം എനിവേ മേക്ക് ഇറ്റ് ഷോർട്ട് ഇനോ എനിക്ക് വളരെ സന്തോഷമാണ് എൻ്റെ പിള്ളേരെ ഞാൻ നോക്കി ഒരു എൻ്റെ പിള്ളേരുടെ കൂട്ട് എല്ലാവരും പറയും അവിടെ ചർച്ചിലുള്ളവർ ഇതാണോ അമ്മ ഇതാണോ അമ്മ അമ്മച്ചി പറയും ഞാനാ അമ്മ പട്ട് നോക്കുന്നില്ല അവൾ കുഞ്ഞുമോൾ രണ്ട് വയസ്സാകുന്നതിന് മുമ്പ് ഗ്രേസി ഉണ്ടായി അപ്പൊ കുഞ്ഞുമോക്ക് അത്ര അറ്റൻഷൻ പോയില്ല അപ്പൊ ഞാനാ അതുപോലെ എൻ്റെ രാജു രാജു ഉണ്ടായി സിക്സ് മന്ത്സ് ആയപ്പോ അവനും വിട്ടിട്ട് പോയി എൻ്റെ അമ്മച്ചി എൻ്റെ കയ്യിൽ എന്താ മോളെ നോക്കിക്കോ എന്ന് പറഞ്ഞ് പെയിൻറ്റ് ആയി അതിൽ പിന്നെ എൻ്റെ അമ്മച്ചി ഒത്തിരി സുഖമില്ലാതായി ഞാനാ എൻ്റെ രാജുവിന് ലില്ലി ലില്ലി അത്രയും അപ്പോഴത്തേക്ക് ഞാൻ ട്രെയിനിങ് പോയി എനിക്ക് എന്തോ പറയണമെന്ന് എനിക്കറിയാൻ പയ്യ ഞാൻ ഈ കുഞ്ഞുമോൾ ഒത്തിരി ഫാസ്റ്റ് ഒത്തിരി ഇങ്ങനെ 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 മെലിഞ്ഞരുത് അങ്ങ് ഓടും അവൾ രണ്ടു പേരെയും രണ്ട് ഗ്രേസി ഒരു കൈ കുഞ്ഞുമോളെ ഒരു കൈ പിടിച്ചോണ്ട് പോകുമ്പോൾ കുഞ്ഞുമോൾ കാണാൻ ഇതാന്ന് പറഞ്ഞ അവിടെ പോയിരിക്കും ഗ്രേസിക്ക് രണ്ടു പേർക്കും നല്ല ഒരു ഉടുപ്പ് മേടിച്ചോ ഗ്രേസിയുടെ ഉടുപ്പ് കീറാതെ നല്ലതായിരിക്കും കുഞ്ഞുമോളുണ്ടല്ലോ അവിടെ ഇവിടെ ഇരുന്ന് ഒത്തിരി ഇതാ അപ്പച്ചൻ പറയും മോളെ ഇപ്പോഴല്ലേ നിനക്ക് ഡ്രസ്സ് മേടിച്ചു ഇല്ല അപ്പച്ച കീറിപ്പോയി എനിക്ക് ഇനിയൊരു ഡ്രസ്സ് വേണം അവക്ക് കുഞ്ഞുമോക്ക് പൈസ വേണമെങ്കിൽ കോളേജിൽ പോകുമ്പോൾ എങ്ങനെ അറിയാമോ പെതുക്കെ അപ്പച്ചൻ്റെ ഇരിക്കുക വന്നിട്ട് നൈസ് അപ്പച്ചൻ്റെ തല ചീവി കൊടുക്കുക തടവി കൊടുക്കുക അപ്പച്ചൻ അപ്പം മനസ്സിലാവും ഇവക്ക് ഏതാണ്ട് വേണം അപ്പച്ചൻ ചോദിക്കും എന്തോ മോളെ എന്തോ വേണം പറയാന്ന് ആ അപ്പച്ച അപ്പച്ചന് തലയൊക്കെ ജീവി കൊടുക്കുക ആ ഓക്കെ എന്നാൽ ശരി അപ്പച്ചന് കാലത്തെ എഴുന്നേറ്റ് ഹൗസ് വിസിറ്റിംഗ് എല്ലാം ചെയ്ത് മദ്രാസിലെ ചൂടല്ലയോ ചൂടത്ത് വന്ന് അപ്പച്ചൻ ഇരിക്കും ഇവിടെ ജീവി കൊടുക്കുമ്പോൾ അപ്പച്ചൻ അങ്ങ് ഉറങ്ങിയും പോകും അപ്പച്ചൻ്റെ എനിക്ക് പെതുക്കെ തട്ടി അപ്പച്ച എനിക്ക് കുറച്ച് പാക്കറ്റ് മണി വേണം ഇപ്പോഴല്ലേ ഞാൻ തന്നെ എന്താ പറ്റി ഗ്രേസിയുടെ പാക്കറ്റ് മണി ബസ്സിന് പോകും അവിടെ കയ്യിലുണ്ട് ഇവിടെ പാക്കറ്റ് മണി രണ്ട് ദിവസത്തിനകം തീരും അപ്പളേ അവൾ അപ്പ അമ്മച്ചി പറയും നിനക്ക് വലിയ ഒരു ഡോക്ടറോ അല്ലെ വലിയ ഒരു പ്രസിഡന്റിനെ വേണം കെട്ടിപ്പിക്കാൻ അങ്ങനെ അമ്മച്ചി പറയുമായിരുന്നു ബട്ട് ഒടുവിൽ ആദ്യം എൻ്റെ കൂടെ ഇരുന്നിട്ട് വിയാർക്ക
എന്താണെന്ന് പറഞ്ഞാൽ രണ്ട് ബ്യൂട്ടിഫുൾ പിള്ളേരെ വല്ലതും പറ്റിയാലും ഞങ്ങൾക്ക് വലിയ പ്രോബ്ലം ഉണ്ട് അപ്പച്ചൻ ഞങ്ങൾ പറഞ്ഞിട്ട് അപ്പച്ച ഞങ്ങളുടെ അടുക്കി ഇവിടെ ഞങ്ങൾ നോക്കിക്കോളാം എന്നാൽ എൻ്റെ ഭർത്താവ് എന്തേലും പറ്റിയാൽ എന്നെ അപ്പച്ചൻ ചോദിക്കും സോ അതുകൊണ്ട് എൻ്റെ എൻ്റെ ഭർത്താവും എനിക്ക് ഏറ്റപ്പെടും ഞാൻ എന്തോ പറയുന്നത് എൻ്റെ പിള്ളേർക്ക് ഞാൻ എന്തോ ചെയ്യണോ അതല്ല എൻ്റെ ഭർത്താവ് നോ എന്ന് ഇതുവരെ പറഞ്ഞിട്ടില്ല അതുപോലെ ഞങ്ങൾ രണ്ടു പേരും എൻ്റെ കുഞ്ഞുമോളെയും ഗ്രേസിയും ഞങ്ങളുടെ കൂടെ വന്നു അവർ മെഡിക്കൽ ന്യൂയോർക്കിൽ കല്യാണം കഴിച്ചിട്ട് കുഞ്ഞുമോൾക്ക് ഒത്തിരി പിക്കിയ അവൾക്ക് ഡോക്ടറെ കെട്ടണമെന്ന് പറഞ്ഞാൽ എത്രയോ പേര് വന്ന് ആ എല്ലാവരെയും നോന്നു അപ്പച്ചനും അമ്മച്ചിയും മോളെ അവൾ ഇതുവരെ കെട്ടി ഞാൻ പറഞ്ഞു അപ്പച്ച അവൾക്കൊരു ഹോ ഇതുണ്ട് അവൾ ഉദ്ദേശിച്ചതേ അവൾ ചെയ്യത്തുള്ളൂ ജസ്റ്റ് ലീവ് അപ്പച്ചൻ്റെ അവിടെ അല്ലല്ലോ ആരും ഒന്നും പറയാൻ അമേരിക്കയിലല്ലോ ഇവിടെ എന്തോ ചെയ്താലും ആരും ഒന്നും പറയത്തില്ല ഇന്ത്യയിലല്ലിയ പാസ്റ്ററുടെ മോളാ ഒന്ന് നൂന്ന് പോലും നടക്കാൻ ഒക്കത്തില്ല എൻ്റെ അപ്പച്ചൻ പറയും മോളെ നല്ലോണം നൂന്ന് നടാ വല്ലോണ്ടേ മോളിൽ പോയി കയറാറ് നല്ല അങ്ങനെ എൻ്റെ അപ്പച്ചൻ ഇന്ത്യക്കാരെ മനുഷ്യനാണ് നിങ്ങൾ ഓൾഡ് ഫാഷനാണ് നിങ്ങൾ ഒത്തിരി ഓപ്പൺ ആയിരുന്നു ഞങ്ങളെ ഒത്തിരി ഒരു ഉടുപ്പ് പോലും കീറിയിട്ട് ചർച്ച വരാൻ ഒക്കത്തില്ല പോയി മാറ്റിയിട്ട് വാ നല്ല ഉടുപ്പിട്ട് നല്ല ഡീസെൻ്റായിട്ട് ഞാൻ ഞങ്ങളും അമ്മച്ചിയും വരണം അങ്ങനെ ഞങ്ങളെ വളർത്തി 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 വന്നു ഞങ്ങൾ വലിയതായിട്ടും ഞങ്ങൾക്ക് അതേ സ്വഭാവം ബട്ട് എത്രയെല്ലാം ഉണ്ടെങ്കിലും ദൈ കാലത്തെ എഴുന്നേറ്റ് നാല് മണിക്ക് അപ്പച്ചൻ ബെഡിൻ്റെ അടിയിൽ തന്നെ ഇങ്ങനെ കിടന്ന് ആ ഭർത്ത പ്രാർത്ഥിക്കുന്നത് അത് പ്രാർത്ഥിച്ച് കഴിഞ്ഞാൽ അമ്മച്ചിയെ ഉണർത്തി രണ്ടു പേരും കൂടെ പാട്ട് പാടി പാടും പിന്നെ ആറ് മണിയാകുമ്പോൾ ഞങ്ങളെ എല്ലാവരെയും ഉണർത്തി കുടുംബ പ്രാർത്ഥന ആറ് മണിക്ക് എഴുന്നേറ്റ് ഞങ്ങളെ അങ്ങനെ വളർ ഇപ്പോഴും ഞങ്ങൾക്ക് പ്രാർത്ഥന എന്ന് പറഞ്ഞാൽ എൻ്റെ പേരിലും പണിയാന്ന് പറഞ്ഞാൽ തലയിൽ കൈ വെച്ച് പ്രാർത്ഥിച്ച് പോകും പോയി ഒരു പെൻസിൽ വേണമെങ്കിൽ പോയിരുന്ന് പ്രാർത്ഥി എൻ്റെ പെൻസിൽ ഇച്ചിരി ആയപ്പച്ച എനിക്ക് വേണം പോയി പൊട്ടു കുത്തി പ്രാർത്ഥി പെൻസിൽ തരും പിന്നെ സ്കൂളിൽ പോയിട്ട് തിരിച്ച് വരുമ്പോൾ ഓർക്ക് സ്വമ്മ പെൻസിൽ മേടിച്ചോളൂ എന്ന് കണ്ടോ ദൈവം തന്നെ നീ പ്രാർത്ഥിച്ചോ പ്രാർത്ഥിച്ചപ്പോൾ പ്രാർത്ഥിച്ച് കാണത്തില്ല എന്നാലും പറയുക പ്രാർത്ഥിച്ച് എന്നാൽ അപ്പച്ചൻ അതിന് അങ്ങനെ ഓരോ കാര്യമും പ്രേ 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 എന്ന് അങ്ങനെ വളർത്തിയോണ്ട് ഇന്നും ഞങ്ങൾ അതുപോലെ കുഞ്ഞുമോൾ എൻ്റെ കുഞ്ഞുമോൾ എം എസ് ഡബ്ല്യു കഴിഞ്ഞിട്ട് ജോലി കിട്ടിയപ്പോൾ ജയിലിൽ പോയി ജോ അവൾ ജോലിക്ക് വന്നു ജയിലിൽ ആരും അവിടെ തന്നെ നമ്മുടെ ഇന്ത്യയുടെ ജയിൽ എങ്ങനെ ഇത്തയും ജയിലാണ് അവിടെ പോയി അവർക്ക് വേണ്ടി കൗൺസിലിംഗ് കൊടുത്തിച്ച് യു നോ ഹൂ ഇസ് ജീസസ് നോ യു രാമകൃഷ്ണ അല്ല നിൻ്റെ ദൈവമല്ല അവനെല്ലാം ഇങ്ങനെ ഇരിക്കുക എൻ്റെ ജീസസ് അലായി സ്റ്റിൽ അലായി അവരോട് സുവിശേഷം പറഞ്ഞ് അവർക്ക് കൗൺസിലിംഗ് കൊടുക്കുന്ന മാത്രമല്ല അവരെ ദൈവത്തിൻ്റെ സന്നിധിയിൽ ഒത്തിരി ഇല്ല എങ്ങനെ ജയിലിൽ കിടക്കുന്നവരല്ലയോ മുരടന്മാരല്ലയോ ഒരു കുറച്ച് അവർ മാനസാന്തരപ്പെടും അങ്ങനെ അന്ന് തൊട്ടേ കൊച്ചു തൊട്ടേ അവൾ ധൈര്യമായിട്ട് പോയി സുവിശേഷം പറയും സ്കൂളിലെ ഉള്ള പിള്ളേരിലേക്കിലും എന്താ പൈസ എളുപ്പം തീർന്ന് ഹോട്ടലിൽ കൊണ്ടുപോയി പൈ ഫുഡ് മേടിച്ചു കൊടുത്തിട്ട് ആ ദൈവത്തിനെ കുറിച്ച് അവൾ പറയുന്നു പിന്നെ അടുത്ത രണ്ടാഴ്ച കഴിഞ്ഞിട്ട് ചർച്ചിൽ ആ പിള്ളേരെ കൊണ്ടുവരും അങ്ങനെ എൻ്റെ കുഞ്ഞുമോൾ കുറിച്ച് പറഞ്ഞാൽ ഇന്ന് മുഴുവനും ഇരുന്നാലും പറഞ്ഞാൽ തീരത്തില്ല അതുപോലെ നല്ല എൻ്റെ കുഞ്ഞുമോൾ ഷീസ് ടൈനി ആര് വന്നാലും സുവിശേഷ വേലക്കാർ വന്നാൽ അവർക്കൊന്നും കൊടുക്കാതെ ഞങ്ങൾ വിടത്തിൽ അതുപോലെ കുഞ്ഞുമോൾ സാമച്ച സാമച്ച എസ് എന്ന് പറയുന്നതിന് മുമ്പ് അവൾ പോയി ചെക്കും എഴുതി കൊണ്ടുവന്ന് കൊടുക്കും അങ്ങനത്തെ ഒരാളായിരുന്നു ഷി ലൈക്സ് ടു ഗീവ് ഷി ലൈക്സ് ടു ഗീവ് ഷി ഗേവ് അതുപോലെ ദൈവം സഹായിച്ച് നല്ല ഒരു ഭർത്താവ് ഡോക്ടർ വേണമെന്ന് പറഞ്ഞു ഇവിടെ നിന്ന് പോയി കണ്ടു പോലും ഇല്ല ഡോക്ടറിനെ അപ്പച്ചൻ വിളിച്ച് പറഞ്ഞു മോളെ നീ പറഞ്ഞ ഡ്യൂട്ട് ഒരു ഡോക്ടറെ ഞങ്ങൾ കണ്ടുപിടിച്ചു എന്തോ പറ അപ്പച്ച റെഡി ആക്കിക്കോ ഞാൻ വന്നേക്കാം മൂന്നാല് ദിവസത്തിനകം വന്നേക്കാം അവധി ചോദിക്കണം അവധി തരും ഞാൻ വന്നേക്കാം അപ്പോൾ അവധി ചോദിച്ച് കിട്ടിയോ കിട്ടിയോ ആ എല്ലാം പാക്ക് ചെയ്തിട്ട് എന്തോ പാക്ക് ചെയ്യണം കുറച്ച് അവിടെ പോയി ഇല്ലേ സാരിയൊക്കെ മേടിക്കും പാക്ക് ചെയ്തിട്ട് പോയിട്ട് സാമിന് മൂന്ന് ദിവസത്തിനകം അവർ വർത്താ
39 years marriage life. She never, and Uru Nalu Polum, Kanir with our Karaji, that was a Sama. And the Kunimole, thank you, Sama. Jolie with another clinic in the other clinic in the 24 hours. And the Kunimole could hear them. It ran bad, I learned. Why are the Baranjal now to gravel in the Sama Jolie Kipogum? Adi admit type and Yan out of a pull up. Hospital admit down Balanyampo. In a cover of code, Erikan. Any can knock on a nurse more correct item, no chin, no could no. No, Uru browser Lisa on a play Maricandia. Lisa on the po exercise in a po it to one to Kodukand or Marina. At the fast and exercise say the Karika, the Tina Chatu. Any career till a medical son. Yendokonatanya choi, Yenduan, and that will never burn a parain of Yendokotan, Eridi Vikim. Upon the luckily, Lisa Molondar. Kunimolo exercises in Boila, one the Numboil, our nurse on the Marnu would come on the police on the world. What are you giving to my ma? Oh, this medicine. Oh, she didn't go to the physical therapy or whatever it is. Anna Yana in the Lisa Langi, Annavalu on the Kortechu Poina, Epole and the Kunimolo Poina, but our coach, they won't say, Anna. No, 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 no. My mom don't need that. No, doc, doctor don't. Okay, go and call the doctor. Let me talk to you. I'm going to call the doctor. I'm going to call the doctor. I'm going to call the doctor. She's a very good doctor. She's going to become a very patient. I'm going to call the doctor. 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 To go to the hospital, to go to the hospital, and to go to the hospital every day. I said, are you okay? I'm okay. Are you okay? I'm okay. 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 Every day. I'm okay. 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 Hospital loaded up, Mary Mama, Mary Mama, Sam Burn. Mary Mammy, I pull up for your dinner. Yan and Dutch Yan, Yan the Bartabo, Kadakela. I have to watch and take care of it. And beside the other, the coronavirus, Ari out of Catatula. Even Sam, a husband, died to wine there about six or seven o'clock, and can be a beauty for him. Our Kadishamala, Tanerikin, or Tanama, Belly Volo, and he can have Kusatila. Anganola Pavla Tadne with it. Any kind of Manasal and the Kunimoda Mata, and the Bartava, and Nala the Chalapala and the Noko the Bolo. You will have worth all the other pudding, and the more you coach him on Manora Machi. I will marry Kin and then the coach forever. Machi, don't worry, okay? In case something happened, Doctor Machi, Doctor Machi, Doctor Pachan, I'm looking. In something happened, Doctor Machi, don't cry, okay? She is in the better place. A coach at two eyes or a coach on the Noda Pareva. She, but Dr. Machi is going to be a better place. Don't cry, okay? I'm you going to miss, I'm going to miss her so much, Machi. I know, but she don't have no more pain. What do we love now? Kunyamoka went to Yenda, they say a man or a part and body care picture. She was so happy. Our grandi work with Elijah and the Barana would three carry on. Other than the Sandoche, Kunimode and Gracie and Toya. I would go to drink my vanity and the grace and the gum thin the tea, and the gum which is a gum. Auntie, you already chew the angan our avenue. And the Sandoshan of Paranal, younger the beetle, Adi the Angucha. Coaching a little, the Utirna, coaching a little, don't you? You were a lot of college, you put a kinner. Oduka the period, a docker and chase, whatever, and then even a car. Are the winch another joya? 
ജോയി വന്ന് എടുത്തോണ്ട് അവൻ്റെ ഫ്രണ്ടിന് ധരിക്കെ കൊണ്ടു ഒരു പ്രാവശ്യം നമ്മുടെ അവിടുത്തെ ഡയപ്പർ തുണിയല്ലയോ തുണിയും കൊണ്ടെല്ലാം കെട്ടി അവനെ കൊണ്ടുപോയി അവൻ അവനെ കൊണ്ടുപോയി ഫ്രണ്ടിൻ്റെ എനിക്ക് ഞാൻ പെടുത്തു വെച്ചു അയ്യോ ഇവനെ പൊക്കിക്കൊണ്ട് വരുന്ന കാരണം താഴെ വീഴുന്ന എൻ്റെ കൂട്ട് അങ്ങനെ എൻ്റെ സന്തോഷം പറഞ്ഞാൽ അവരുടെ ടോയ് അങ്ങനെ അവനെ ഒത്തിരി ഇഷ്ടമായിട്ട് ഞങ്ങളെല്ലാവരും ഞങ്ങളുടെ ഫാമിലിയുടെ ഞങ്ങളുടെ അമ്മച്ച എന്നോട് പറഞ്ഞു മോളെ അച്ചാച്ചന് പതിനാറ് വയസ്സപ്പോൾ ഹൈസ്കൂൾ കഴിഞ്ഞു കോളേജ് പഠിച്ചോണ്ടിരിക്കുമ്പോൾ ആ ചിക്കൻ ബാക്സ് വന്ന് ദൈവം വിളിച്ചത് ദൈവ വിലയ്ക്ക് വേണ്ടി എൻ്റെ അച്ചാച്ചൻ പോയി പോയി ഇവിടെ ഇവിടെ വന്നു ഞങ്ങളെ എല്ലാവരെയും കൊണ്ടുവന്നു വി കുൺ ഹേബിൾ ടു സീ ഹിം ലാസ്റ്റ് ഈ കൊറോണ വൈറസിൻ്റെ മുഖാന്തരം അച്ചാച്ചൻ എൻ്റെ അണ്ണിയുടെ അടുക്കെ പറഞ്ഞു ടെൽ ദം നോട്ട് ടു കം ഐ ഡോ വാണ്ട് ദം ടു ഗെറ്റ് സിക്ക് ഹൂ കെയർ വി വാണ്ട് ടു സീ ഹിം ബിക്കോസ് ഓഫ് ഹിം വി ആൾ ഹിയർ എനിവേ അവർ അച്ചാച്ചൻ പറഞ്ഞതോത്ത് മൈ സിസ്റ്റർ അല്ല പിള്ളേർ ഡേവിഡ് മീഹ നവ എല്ലാവരും ചുറ്റിൽ ഇരുന്ന് എൻ്റെ അച്ചാച്ചനെ പറഞ്ഞു ഞങ്ങൾക്ക് നോക്കാൻ ഒത്തുള്ളു അറ്റ്ലീസ്റ്റ് ഇന്ന് എൻ്റെ കുഞ്ഞുമോളെ കാണാൻ എൻ്റെ മോൾ വിട്ടു അവിടെ ബർത്ത്ഡേ സെലിബ്രേറ്റ് ചെയ്യാനും പറ്റും എനിക്ക് വളരെ സന്തോഷം അത് ഞാൻ ചെയ്തില്ലായിരുന്നെങ്കിൽ എൻ്റെ ആയുസ് മുഴുവൻ ഞാൻ വിഷമിച്ചേന് ഞങ്ങളെല്ലാവരും പോയി അവിടെ ബർത്ത്ഡേ സെവൻറ്റി സെക്കൻഡ് ബർത്ത്ഡേ സെലിബ്രേറ്റ് ചെയ്തു ഷീ വാസ് വെരി ഹാപ്പി കണ്ണ് തുറക്കാതെ മൂടി ഇരുന്ന എൻ്റെ കുഞ്ഞുമോളിൽ നിന്ന് എൻ്റെ ശബ്ദം കേട്ടിട്ട് മേരിമാമ വന്നു ആയി മേരിമാമ ആയി കുഞ്ഞുമോളെ മേരിമാമ വന്നു മോളെ കണ്ടു മേരിമാമയ്ക്ക് വേറെ വേലയില്ല ഗിഫ്റ്റ് എല്ലാം കൊണ്ടുപോയപ്പോൾ മേരിമാമ എന്തിനാണ് ഇതെല്ലാം കൊണ്ടു എന്നാലും ഐ വോണ്ട് ടു ഗിവ് ലാസ്റ്റ് ഞാൻ ഓടുപോലത്തെ ഗിഫ്റ്റും കൊടുത്തു അവൾ മേടിച്ചു ലീസ മോളെ താങ്ക് യു മോളെ എവറി ഡേ അവൾ ശരീര സുഖമില്ലെന്ന് അറിഞ്ഞപ്പോൾ ന്യൂയോർക്കിലെ ഗ്രേസി മിനസോട്ടായാലും കുഞ്ഞുമോൻ മിനസോട്ടായാലും ലില്ലി എല്ലാവരും വീഡിയോ ചാറ്റ് ചെയ്ത് അവിടെ ഒരിക്കൽ ഞങ്ങൾ വർത്താനം പറയുമായിരുന്നു പാട്ട് പാടുമായിരുന്നു ഷീ വാസ് സോ ഹാപ്പി ഷീ ഗാൻ ഷീസ് നോട്ട് സാഡ് ഒത്തിരി ഹാപ്പി ആയിട്ടും നല്ലതായിട്ടാണ് അവൾ പോയത് ഐ നോ ഷീസ് വിത്ത് മൈ മാം മൈ ഡാഡ് മൈ ജോയ് my attachment my raju mercy more than that she is with the heavenly father holding his hand she is enjoying and dancing with him she is a very party girl really tell you she is eppolu njangade veetile habit a eppolu njangade veetil vaalu vannu vannu irundond adha used aayi poi അതുപോലെ അവിടെ വീട്ടിൽ എപ്പോഴും ആൾ അതിനാ വലിയ വീട് മേടിച്ചു അവൾ പറഞ്ഞു മോളെ എന്തിനാറ്റേ വലിയ വീട് എൻ്റെ വീട്ടിൽ എൻ്റെ സിബ്ലിങ് എല്ലാവരും വന്ന് താമസിക്കാം പാസ്റ്റർ ഒരു മീറ്റിംഗ് വെക്കാം ഇങ്ങനെ ഓരോ കാര്യം അതാ അവൾ വലിയ വീട് മേടിച്ച് എല്ലാവരും ആ വീട്ടിൽ വന്നു താമസിച്ചു സന്തോഷിച്ചു ഒരു നാൾ പോലും ഞങ്ങൾ വിഷമിച്ചിട്ടില്ല എൻ്റെ കുഞ്ഞുമോട് കൂടെ ഇരുന്നു എൻ്റെ എല്ലാ സിബ്ലിങ്ങളും ഞാൻ അമ്മയായിരുന്നെങ്കിലും ഞാൻ അമ്മയുടെ കൂട്ട് അവരെ നോക്കി അതെനിക്ക് ഒത്തിരി പ്രിവിലേജ് എനിക്ക് മുമ്പ് എൻ്റെ ഇളയവരെല്ലാം പോകുന്നു എല്ലാവർക്കും ബായി പറയുവാൻ ഞാൻ അതാ എനിക്ക് വിഷമം എന്നാലും ദർ ഇസ് എ പെർപ്പസ് ഫോർ ദറ്റ് ഞാൻ അവരെ നോക്കി അതായിരിക്കും ദൈവത്തിൻ്റെ ഇഷ്യൂ നീ നോക്കി അവരെ നീ വിട ഞാൻ ഇന്നലെ ഇരുന്ന ദൈവം എനിക്ക് ഇങ്ങനത്തെ സമയം ഞാൻ ഇനി എന്തോ പറയാതെ ഒന്നും പറയാനില്ല നിറയെ പറയാനുണ്ട് എന്നാലും ഞാൻ നിർത്തട്ടുണ്ട് സമയമില്ല അതുകൊണ്ട് നിർത്തുന്നു a lot of people have been competing for the favorite title during this last two days i think we all know unchallenged that i am the favorite daughter in law uh, a lot of people talk about making mom's favorite dish but can any of you boast about cooking her least favorite dish the worst beef she's ever had in her life <laughs> After the first bite only mom in very mom fashion could say that's okay mone this is how you learn you're going to do better next time <laughs> yeah um i haven't known mom the way that most of you have known her since i met mom 4 years ago uh, her health has drastically declined each year i think i think she was sad that she couldn't do more for us um 
but as I told mom before she passed, she was truly the best mother-in-law I could have ever asked for, more than anything I could have ever asked for. Because not only did she raise a kind and loving husband for me, but I learned so much more from watching mom than I could have learned from anybody in my life. I've had to unlearn, unlearn a lot of lessons in my life, and I owe it all to her. I always thought it was best staying away from people so they don't disappoint you, but mom taught me that you stay close to people because you never know when you'll have an opportunity to help somebody. It didn't matter how somebody treated you. An opportunity to help somebody was an opportunity to show the love of Christ. And that's how mom lived her life. Mom taught me that a situation is only as bad as your mentality. She suffered more physically than anybody that I've known. But every day she woke up with a smile on her face and she made it her mission every day to put a smile on everyone else's. Mom taught me that it's not easy to love everybody, but everybody needs love. Mom taught me that it can be fun and insightful hanging out with uncles and aunties because they were once young and have much wisdom to impart on us. One of my favorite things to do with mom was to sit down and talk with her about how many miracles God has done in her life. It literally helped strengthen my faith, and I'm so grateful for her, to her for that. Mom taught me that marriage, what marriage should look like, and so did you, Dad. That you should always speak the kindest words towards each other and always uplift your spouse. And most importantly, Mom taught me how important it is to build the foundation of my family life on Jesus Christ. She taught me that life will have its struggles, but your faith in Jesus Christ is the only thing you can lean on to help weather the storm. When I told her my problem, she always said, don't worry, everything will be all right. And I know that's because she never worried about tomorrow, because life and death and everything in between is in God's hands. And there's no better hands to entrust your life. So for all these lessons and more, thank you, Mom. You really were a gift to me, and it was truly a blessed opportunity to be able to call you my mom. You've helped me so much. Thank you. I want to thank you all for being here, either in person or in line, uh, online, to celebrate my mom's life. It really is a testament to how many people she touched. Before I begin, though, I want to thank so many people. I don't want it to be lost in everything on how touched and thankful my family is. Thank you to American Best Hospice, uh, Turntine Jackson Morrow for taking care of mom so beautifully. Thank you, church, for being the body of Christ and showing Christ's love in the hardest times. Thank you for everyone that came to the house before my mom passed. She was so happy to see people. Thank you to her siblings, nieces, nephews, grandnieces, and grandnephews for joining mom on Zoom so many days prior to her passing. You made her feel so special. Thank you for all the family that have loved and encouraged us since her passing, that you have always been there for us. Thank you, Sam and Hevzi, for taking so much off our plate during this time. Thank you for all of the friends that we've met through the journeys of our life. My Longhorn family, for <laughs> outpouring your love onto us during this time. Thank you so much, Freddie Uncle, Ajianti, as well as all the members of the church that have contributed food to the meal train, and Esther Mama for all the breakfasts that you provided for us. Sundays of Chechen, all the desserts that a diabetic family should not have, <laughs> we had. <laughs> um, thank you, Minia Mama, Prakasha Chechen, Alyssa, for coming every day to check on Dad. Thank you, Frisco Faith Fellowship, for loving us so much through everything for the last 12 years. Thank you, Benny Uncle and Anuenti, for always taking care of our family like their own. We cannot thank you enough <laughs> through the years that you have taken care of us in all of life's journeys. And thank you for all that helped my sister and Susan to make mom look so beautiful and peaceful today. That gives me peace, knowing that she's at rest. Thank you, Metro Youth and the AV team, stepping up so crucially in all of this. Thank you, Pastor Joe's, for conducting the memorial yesterday. But lastly, I want to thank Pastor Satish and Pastor Auntie. Through your guidance, your love, your devotion to our family, we were able to get through this because you were with us every step of the way. So thank you all. So I read that 
when speaking at a funeral, it's always good to add words of a poet. So I chose Kanye West. Um, he wrote or sang, Hey mama, I want to scream so loud of, for you because I'm so proud of you. And let me tell you what I'm about to do. I know I act a fool, but I promise I'm going back to school. And I appreciate what you allowed for me. And I just want you to be proud of me. My mother and I love this song so much that we actually danced at my wedding for this. At our wedding. But <laughs> an experience I never thought would happen because of everything she went through. In 2012, she had her first heart attack and stroke that caused her to be hospitalized for two weeks. She loves telling this story because it was a great testimony to God's care and love for her. She actually coded in that stay, and she went to see Jesus. He told her she could rest and not be tied down to this world. She replied, I need to go back because I still have things to do. Jesus told her what she returns to is a world of suffering, and she could only say, and she could only say back, there are certain things only a mother could do. She woke up after that, after flatlining. Her love for my father, my sister, and I brought her back so that she could spend the next eight years with us. That story reminds me every day how blessed and amazing she was. As our Lord said to her, she returned to a world where she suffered, but she never let that define her. As many of you know, in these last eight years that she always put everyone before her and wanted to make them feel heard, seen, and loved. She really was a Proverbs 31 woman. And I want to spend this time remembering my mother, who she was, how she made me and the people around us feel. First, I want to talk about my mother was a prayer warrior. Since she was a young girl, she has always been praying for her family, her father's ministry. She continued to pray throughout her life earnestly for everybody she met and everything that they needed. So many people have recounted to me how they always ask mom to pray for them because they always believed her prayers got special precedence in heaven. Sunil Uncle from the Frisco Faith Fellowship always joked with my mom. She had a direct line to heaven because the fellowship would ask for her prayers for their interviews, their health, their children's health, their children's school, anything, and it would unfold for good almost immediately. My mom dedicated her life to praying for others because she believed her contribution to this world was to be an intercessory for others. She really prayed without ceasing. Even two days before she passed, she struggled mightily to speak, but she prayed so confidently and unceasingly for my family, her friends, her church, and those we all meet along the way. Even in her last days, she didn't pray for healing, but she prayed for comfort for others. My mother did pray for herself, though, and she was very specific on what she prayed for. My mom always, uh, my, sorry, my wife always jokes that mom's personal prayers were the most powerful because she always got what she wanted. When looking for a husband, my mom prayed for four things, tall, advanced education, loyal servant, uh, so a loyal servant of God, and kind. She said the moment she met my father, she knew she got all of that. When my mom and dad started their married life, she prayed for a girl, and she got my beautiful sister, Dr. Lisa Trichy. She prayed for a boy next, and she got a slightly less beautiful baby in me. She prayed for my dad to start a practice and to be successful, and she was the backbone of praying for everyone there. She prayed for my sister to get into med school in a great residency program. She prayed for me to find a loving, prayerful wife that pushed me to be the best, like she did for my dad. She prayed for Susan and, and I to move back to Dallas to be with her and dad, and all these things were fulfilled. God rewarded her for her unwavering faith in him, and that unwavering faith was something we can all admire. Her and her dedication to prayer was hard to live up to, but it was her talent as a servant of God. On top of being a prayer warrior, my mom was fun-loving and the most hospitable person. She was vivacious and lively from her youth to her last day. She was the life of the party, and when she entered the room, the air always changed because of the gravity of who she was. She brought everyone to her. She loved hosting families for a big gathering. She loved having prayer meetings in her house. She loved entertaining people, entertaining people because that is what made her happy. 
always to have people around joking with her. Before her health deterioration, it did not matter if it was five people or 500 people. She would find a way to cook and feed everyone. If you entered the house, she would make it a point that you left fed and happy. Our family and friends from all over the world regale us on how she was always the most hospitable and loving person in their lives. I think the Olive Garden stole her, her slogan, because your family here at Mom's house. A lot of you know that my parents love jokes, and she was the funniest person I knew. Some say I got my humor from her, but she was way, way more brutal than I ever was. My favorite joke she made about me is she asked if I had a girlfriend in college. I told her I didn't have time to chase after women. She replied, I know you're not running after girls because you would have lost weight by now. I still feel that burn to this day. <laughs> Actually, I just want to bring, this is not in the speech, I want to bring up that she really did call me her second favorite Joshua. <laughs> Joshua, uh, Joshua jo Joseph uncle would come in and I'd be like, hey, your favorite Joshua is coming. And she's like, where? So just wanted to bring that up. So there's no debate there. Um, but jokes and all, her personality was electric and engaging. So many people have told us about how stylish she was and how modern she was. She really stood out because she was fearless in everything she did. She was the first woman on the PYCD board back in the 90s because she was never scared to speak her mind in any room. She had a contagious passion that oozed from her that inspired so many people around her. My mom was also the most generous and caring person I've ever met in my life. From her days as a young lady to her last day, she spent caring for others. She was an active participant with her siblings in my grandfather's ministry. She loved helping others and taking care of others. So much so that she decided to pursue a master's in social work. She studied how poverty and malnutrition affect young children until she left for the U.S. Um, and until she left for the U.S., that was her mission to ameliorate the lives of the poor. Even when she came to the U.S., she counseled men and women in psychiatric hospitals. She worked to help them feel that their situations weren't hopeless. And importantly, she gave them uh, a new life. As I grow older, her ministry became even, as she grew older, her ministry became even more personal. As she took time to meet with people personally in all different walks of life to counsel them, to pray for them, to love on them. If men or women came to her with a problem, she listened intently and wanted to help them fix their issues. She never held back in her giving. Be it her time, her money, or her resources, she always gave. She loved to take care of others. When I was young, I was actually jealous of how much time she gave to others instead of me, but today I stand here grateful for her example. In the last few years of her life, she could not do the ministry like she once used to, but people would come to her and she would encourage and love on them. When they came to check on her, she would ask them about their lives, their loved ones, their problems, just so that they could walk away with peace. My mom was able to encourage those around the world to make them realize that they were capable of doing anything. She encouraged people to start businesses. She encouraged women to be courageous and daring. She was able to inspire so many people. She truly had the most positive disposition that made others believe their circumstances were never too much to overcome. She was my inspiration. The last trait I want to speak about is how loving my mother was. We have heard over and over again people claiming to be my mother's favorite, but that was her most amazing trait, that she made every single person feel loved and the most special person in that moment. The way that, that love enveloped everyone she met was truly incredible. I want to say I appreciate everyone that, that talked about my father and how much she, or he loved her but I know that my dad's the first one to tell you it is because she loved him first and outpoured so much for him that he was able to succeed. And he will tell you every day how blessed he was that she was an angel to him. And the fact is that it's because of her love that we felt compelled to love others. <sighs> Sorry. Yeah, but... The way that she loved and enveloped everyone, including our family, it was truly incredible. She never judged or made anyone feel bad. All she did was love on them and let them know how amazing they were. The fact that this trait has been consistent over decades is a testament to who she was. I felt her love intensely for so long. 
She made it a point to dance at my wedding, even though she knew she would be sick the next day. She always put my family's needs before hers. My cousin Michal beautifully said that when you lose someone, the emptiness you feel is the love that they bestowed upon you. I'm sure many people here today feel that emptiness without my mother, but maybe some of you are like me. My mother's love was so tremendous that I still feel it today. I feel her kiss on my forehead, her hands on my cheek, her arms wrapped around me for the warmest hugs. There's not been a day that has gone by that I've not felt her love for me. That is why this feels easier. That is why I celebrate her and not mourn her. She was truly special, and those, and only those with so much love can make you feel this warmth of love for so long. Moving back and being with her for the last few months was my greatest honor, and even though she struggled mightily, I felt her love for me every day. She would tell me, I'm too much trouble, and I would look at her in the eyes, it's because you did it first, that this is nothing. I would do this for you forever. And I will cherish those moments for the rest of my life. I will miss seeing her smile in the morning, but I will never forget how her smile made me feel. As I said earlier, I'm, I'm going to celebrate my mother and not mourn her today. She would not want us to weep for her because she got the greatest reward. Our loss is heaven's tremendous gain. When she passed, she was surrounded by my dad, my sister, Susan, and myself. The pastor came just a little bit later, and her heart was still beating, and we sang and prayed. And I believe the last thing she heard on this earth was that singing and thanking God for his goodness, but also thanking him for the gift that was my mother. I truly believe that the first thing she heard when she woke up on the other side is, well done, my good and faithful servant. Come and share your master's happiness. How can a child mourn when his mother received her crown of righteousness? My mother fought the good fight. She finished her race and she kept the faith. I am devastated and I know that the holidays, birthdays, milestones will be hard to experience without her. But today we celebrate her home going and I will rejoice and be glad in it that she has been released from her mortal coil and she is at rest. I will end by bringing Kanye back up. <laughs> Because he wrote, rewrote that song I quoted after his mother passed, and the lyrics he added mattered so much for me today. He said this about his mother. Last night I saw you in my dreams, and now I cannot wait to go back to sleep. This life is all a dream, but my real life starts when I go to sleep. When my course is done on earth, and I am released from this mortal body, when I wake up from this sleep, I will know I will see my mother dancing in heaven, not bound by any sickness or ailment. So I will rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you. Uh, thank you guys for all coming here. Um, every one of you guys loved my mom so much. And um, we've just been so blessed with the outpouring of love from every single one of you guys. And I, if I went one by one to tell you guys of all the love that I've felt from you guys in some of the worst days of my life, I'd probably start crying here, and I don't want to do that. So uh, please forgive me. I'll do it personally uh, to each of you. Uh, but I do have to say, what do you say? In what do you say when you had a mother like me? And I can't think of anything, because in the last few days after she died on Wednesday, I was still in the mode of doing every single thing to try to still make her happy. Every little detail of this event and Thursday and with all the uh, help and direction from the pastor and the pastor's wife who's done so much for us, I knew what I had to do for her to, to make her homecoming, you know, like to do it. Um, I knew that I had to celebrate her, her life was meant to be celebrated. We're not here to just mourn because she left a legacy uh, for me that I will never be able to meet. I will never get close to living up to what she has given to me and what example she has given to me. And so I'll try for the rest of my days to just make her proud. 
in every single thing I do, every, every activity, I will do it. And I, for the last few years after I graduated from medical school, I was, she got sick at the end of medical school. And I had all these dreams of thoughts of what I would do with that time, you know? Uh, and I'll probably go into the story in a little bit later, but basically I thought I was gonna go into health policy. I was gonna go to Washington, D.C. And then my mom got sick. And then everything changed in that moment because I thought she was gonna die. And I changed my entire life for her and it was the easiest thing I've ever done in my entire life. And I don't regret it one bit because because of that, I've had the opportunity for the last three plus years to take care of her and see her in all the different ways. And in all those different ways, I realized how much she loved me, how much impact she had on me. Because the things I did for her, she was doing that for me from the first day I was born. And I realized so much from that. But uh, let me first say, or second say rather, I need to give uh, glory to God. God is good. And he is good all the time. And I know that only because of her. Because everything was ordained in a certain way. He had a plan. He had a timing for every single thing. Everything that we thought was messed up, it wasn't messed up. There was a reason for it. Everything that it didn't go according to what our plan was, you know? There was a reason. We just didn't know at that time. And then when we look back, we can see the grace of God, the direction of God, the blessing of God. And I'll just tell you just the few things that have happened in the course of a couple of months. You know, crazy things happened because of COVID. So my job, brother looked for a different job. And he found a job back in Dallas, even though he's been searching for three years to find a job. God gave him the right job, a better job. And he got to come here. And he got to help my mom and my father take care of my mother and get to be with her in the last few months of her life. That was God's provision, you know? God knew what my father needed. God knew what my mother needed. God knew what Josh and Susan needed. And therefore, he gave it, even though it looked like it wasn't his plan. So, and then, in every little thing, I, if I go on, I, I, I could probably go little by little. Like, even the other day, I was like, Luffy, our dog, is at Sam's place, you know? And my mom was getting better. And so we're like, Maybe Luffy should come back. So my mom that night was saying, um, I really want to see Luffy, you know? That was the night before she died. So she got to have Luffy right before everything she gets um, somehow miraculously happens. And there's a reason, you know? Um, so let me talk about the heritage that I've been given, the legacy that I've been given, which is my mother's father, my mother's father, that's correct. <laughs> my mother's father <clears throat> was a great man of God, and he lived by faith. And the one thing that I know from my mother's life is that she never told you what to do. She just showed you what to do. She didn't tell you to pray. She prayed. And then you saw things happen, you know? She didn't tell you to serve other people. She served God and she served other people. And that's how I learned how to serve other people. And so she saw that in her father. And her father had tremendous faith. Faith that was unparalleled. Faith that when he told his uh, grandfather uh, that he was going to go into the ministry, his grandfather put a, or I'm sorry, his father rather put a shotgun to his head and said, uh, you better think otherwise, you know, but he still believed and he went to a, 
to a state that he didn't know the language, he didn't know a place, he didn't know any single person. He didn't have money, a dollar to his name, and he went. And so my fa mother saw that, and she saw how he, she lived, and there was times that they didn't have food, and somehow, a couple days without food, my, uh, my grandfather would pray, and then miraculously, the food would come. And so because of that, she lived with faith because she saw it every single day. And then she had a brother. Her brother, like, when, this was not normal. He went to a different country of Israel, didn't know the language either, and he went. And then he went to America. And without fear, without, with boldness, he went to a different country. Uh, and he told his siblings to come. And they came. And the, I only say this because my mother, unmarried and her sister also unmarried at the time, that's actually really brave of a Malayali woman to go to a random country, learn new things, and they were bold. They went, even though they had the support of their family, it was still a big thing. And um, she did things like that all the time. Uh, even though she was a pastor's kid, she did track, which was amazing, and she was a star athlete. She said, basically, through her life, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to go after what you want. Believe it. Believe in who you are. You may be proven wrong, but you believe, and you do, and God will be there. She lived a life that said, I will, I will trust that God will take me to places and he will not put me in situations that I will fall. He, I may fall, but there's never a point that he will not catch me. I will not be put into a danger that he cannot make me safe. And so she went boldly to places that other people in her situation, in her culture, in her gender, she was not, would not do. And yet she did it. And because of that, I live, I've been taught something, something so special about how to be fearless, how to be brave, how to be strong when nobody else sees it too. And um, it's, uh, there's a saying in the South. It says, uh, the saying, you come from good stock, you know? I come from good stock because she is a godly woman. She is anointed by God. She's prayed and things would happen. And I can say that even in my life. How many times I asked her for something. I was like, I need this. I, I need God's intervention in my life. And she would pray and things would happen. There was a time that I needed, I had a very tough semester. I needed, I had like, you know, five different tough classes and I needed exactly certain grades in the final so I can make a perfect GPA. And I got exactly that for three out of four of those classes just to get the GPA because she prayed for me, you know? Uh, and I can't also forget uh, every night. I'm a procrastinator by nature. That's kind of what happened today. <laughs> so... Uh, I get so caught up in the details, just like I got caught up in the details of this uh, her funeral. But basically, she knows that about me. She loves that about me. She loves everything about me, every fault of myself, all my insecurities. She, she doesn't see them the way I see them. She sees beyond them because she knows how they make me me. And so I... I think the point was, what was that point? Was uh, that she has been so good to me uh, when I was a procrastinator and I was studying uh, back in like elementary, middle school, all of those kind of things. Procrastinator by nature, some of this is my parents' fault too because they would go and help every single other person stay out super late. I'd come back at 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock. Now I got to do my homework. And so what do I do? I start working. And my mom, whether I asked her, I don't know, but she knew that I needed company. And she would lay in the bed next to me while I was doing my homework. And till this day, 
she tells me that I have to give her credit for all, all the good, good grades that I got. And it is true. I always had her as my backbone, the person that was behind me every single second that believed in me when I didn't even believe in myself. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about what I learned through our sickness. So my life turned upside down. As I graduated from med school, my mom had a double bypass surgery. And I learned a lot of lessons. And I'm going to fast forward to this point real quick. It was my brother's wedding, and somebody came up to me and said, Lisa, what are you doing with your life? You're wasting your life away. And I was like, that's, that's pretty tough criticism. And then I said, it is not a waste to take care of my mother because I saw it in her life. She took care of Apichin so well, so faithfully, you know, so faithfully, you know. Typically, it's a, a son's responsibility to take care of uh, the elders, but she took it on, and my father joined her in that and took care of her so well. And from that, blessings came down. Generational blessings came down. And I know that by example that every single second that I took to take care of her had a reason. Every second was a blessing, a generational blessing. But more so, it taught me how not only to be a good daughter, which now I have to spend all my energy to make sure I'm a good daughter for my father. And I will do that because that's what my mother would want. Um, it taught me a few things when it comes to um, being a doctor. And so, number one is that everybody is somebody's mother, father, brother, sister, and you better treat them like they are. Because one mistake, one careless thing, can mean something huge for them. I only know that because my mom was a pillar of our family. And every time her life was threatened, that steady feeling of, like, was shaken if she was gone. And so uh, I think Amichi talked about it. I saw so many things that are happening called iatrogenically. Iatrogenically means something that happens because of a mistake by healthcare uh, people, health, or even the machines, or something like that. And um, because of those circumstances, where an order was put in, but a procedure was not done ahead of time, so that medicine would actually kill the person. Those are choice, those are things that learn how to be meticulous. And I, as a resident physician, is probably take a lot of time, but I know that my experiences say, well, that's somebody's mother out there, and I better do right by them, you know, and love them. Um, my mom, um, when anybody came into her room when she was sick, even though she was so sick, she was in pain, it didn't look like that. She smiles, and every worry that you have is gone, erased in a second. And so any person that will come, regardless of who they are, what, regardless of what profession they are, what, regardless of how much money they had, she valued them. She saw their inherent worth. And I've seen so many times where she would treat somebody that is in the cleaning department or the sanitation as well as she treated the nurses or the uh, doctors and they were as just as vital to her health and to um, everybody, uh, to everybody's ability to do well. I consider it the privilege of my life to be able to take care of my mother. Every 
24-hour <laughs> days that we did in hospitals that only my dad and I can kind of understand because we were just there. One, we were trading shifts and we were staying at night and, you know, uh, and Amichi was there too, helping all the time. Uh, when it didn't feel like anything because you come next to her and you say, I love you, and she smiles, and then it was worth it. I think I've been conditioned to know how much, how beautiful she is, how beautiful that smile is, and, uh, and I'm going to miss it so much. Um, um, she was my prayer warrior, and the Bible says that in Hebrew 12, 1 through 3, there's four, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders the sin that easily entangles and let us run with perseverance, a race that was marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus and the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. For the joy set beyond, for the joy that was set before him, he endured the chorus and in scorning the shame and sat down at the right hand of the throne of Jesus. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. My mom did not grow weary. She did not lose heart. She had faith, faith that was so tremendous that it moved every one of us to come here and to grow in our own personal faith. Uh, God answered so many prayers, even at the end. When we decided after we put her on hospice, we weren't sure she was going to come back to consciousness. There was a few days we thought maybe we had already spoken her last word. Then my father started praying, Jesus, give me some more time with her. Let me talk to her. Okay? I want a few more moments, a few more lucid moments with her. And God already had set the plan for what will happen. He wanted her to come home with him. But he did not want to not show his power, you know, to show his mercy and his love for us because he is our father. And so that night, within an hour of my father praying over that, she began to talk to us, you know. She became lucid. And then we got about four days where she was talking to us, praying with us, telling us stories, talking to so many countless people over here. I'm blessed that I got that time. I'm blessed to have a program, a residency program that allowed me to be with her for the last few days of her life. I cannot imagine not having that. And I am so blessed and thankful for that opportunity. Someone, our uncle in New York prayed that her kidneys come back. And even though God appointed the plan, her kidneys started working again. She started, she started creating urine tremendously after that prayer, just so that we can see that the power of God is real. That is her life. She shows that the power of God is real. The testimony, the, she is a living testimony that every time, every time there was adversity, every time she was in the hospital, every time it looked like it was, uh, she was at death's door, she survived it. She was like a cat, nine lives. But that's not because of nine lives. It's because of prayer. Prayer from all of you. Prayer from my faithful father. There was times she was, looked like she was paralyzed in 2012. He was praying and praying at her feet and telling, work, please work. Like, get her feet to work because she looked like she was going to be paralyzed. And then we had another aunt. She would whisper Bible verses into her ear. And then she began, she was able to start moving her legs and moving her hands. And that is the power of prayer. If anything we learn from my mother, it is that we need to pray and believe. Believe because he is not, um, he is not going to fail us. He is going to be with us till the very end. And that, please continue to pray for me because I'm going to find it very hard not to have my mother because... My whole entire purpose, my life was about her. And uh, she was my, without her, it's going to be hard, but I, she was that compass to what my purpose is. And now the compass is gone. But that doesn't mean that the examples that she left um, 
It's instilled in my heart and will be the direction by which I continue to do. Mom, you lived an amazing life. Thank you so much for everything you've done for us. You fought the good fight, you finished the race, and you kept the faith. Thank you so much for your example. And thank you, God. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. <clears throat> because he lives, all fear is gone. This is the basis of her, of her faith. Kunwal's faith. Because Jesus said in John chapter 14, 9, 14, 19, he said, because I live, you will live also. And this is what kept her going. As, as I stand here this morning, I'm really heartbroken at the physical loss of my dear wife. But at the same time, I have a great peace within me because she is in the in a she's in heaven, enjoying the presence of God and worshiping God as she she loves as which she loves to do. <clears throat> and during the last week of the of her life on earth on hospice, I I can say for sure that her passing away was the most peaceful one that I ever seen. I was afraid because of her of her kidney failure and her heart failure that combined together would flood the lungs with fluid and you will be suffocating and you'll be, uh, you know, breathing so hard and, you know, and to see people dying of <coughs> fluid building up in the lungs is a, is a very traumatic experience because they suffer to the last breath of the, last breath that they take. But this, when I was, we were besides her all through these seven days attending to her. She was always, in, during this time, most of the time she was awake and she talked to us and she was, she, her spirit was really, I could see that she, she was more, um, more, more awake and trying to, um, uh, you know, talk. You know, we were together every time. She said words of encouragement, and and I looked at her, looked at her, and she was not having any anxiety. Uh, she was so calm during this time. You know, for most of the time she was awake, but for the last. The last 12 hours before she passed away, she went into a coma. And, but she was, you know, she, she, her eyes were closed. She was not in any significant distress that I watched. But I, I knew, I mean, I, you know, when I saw what was happening before my eyes, I couldn't believe it. She had kept her eyes closed for the 12 hours prior to passing away. And at the moment she was about to pass, she opened her eyes wide. And we were, she, her bed was next to the window and she looked out through the window into the, into the sky. And she was fixated there. She was looking straight up. And we were trying to call her. I thought she was waking up and I was trying to wake her up. I mean, calling her name and seeing whether she respond. But she was, she never moved her face from that particular position. And her eyes lit up. And I saw that a glow on her face. And then she took a two deep breaths. 
and then she closed her eyes and, uh, and she passed away from this life to the eternal life. But what I saw there was the most peaceful, peaceful passing away. You know, I have a strong belief that in the last 30 seconds before she passed away, when she opened, God opened her eyes to see the heavenly host come and escort her, take a spirit into, into the presence of God. And I think that's what she saw because I saw her face expression changed and the joy and the, the peace that she was radiating. I knew that was happening. A transition was going on. A spirit was being lifted away into the presence of God. And that was, then I knew for sure that she had a peaceful end. And, and I know, you know, that she is not in any more pain. And the peace that I got after that was so, was so strong that I knew that she is in God's presence enjoying worshiping God and with the, in the presence of God with all the angelic oaths and I'm sure with her, dad, with her upper chin and amachi there with her brothers who have gone on before her she was looking to God and worshiping God and I think I'm so happy you know even though it is so hard to to you know to see her go from this physical life that I can't see her anymore but I know she is she's in the she's in a better place today and I wanted to thank um, I want to I really want to thank the Lord because she gave me 39 years of her life she shared her 39 years of her life with me. And she, I don't have words to express how much she meant to me. She was, she was, a, as all my kids have been talking and everybody that talked before, have been telling about her, about her faith in God. She was a person with a tremendous faith that God, um, uh, you know, she, the faith that she had was unparalleled because that really taught me when I saw her life of faith, it really, uh, you know, it really, you know, it was such a powerful, powerful life. She, you know, everything that she, um, that she faced in life, adversities, and during all the times of her sicknesses, back and forth to the hospital, and going through all the procedures that she had to go, every time she faced it with assurance that God is with her and she's not alone. And as long as God is with you in every situation, as he has promised, everything works for good to them that love God. And she knew that God is going to turn it around. In any adverse situations, she never gave up. She had this great faith, unwavering faith, continu you know, continually bringing it before God all her needs and problems. And she, know, she knew that God was with her during all these times. And so I really thank God for the wonderful faith that she transmitted and, and the thing is she transmitted her faith it was not just her own thing it was like she would tell people that God did this for me and you know I prayed and the Lord heard my prayer and and I really uh, want to really thank the Lord for her faith and and one of the things that I uh, um at home, she was such a loving wife, a very loving, dedicated mother, taking care of the kids. 
you know, when we come back from work, she would, um, she would cook and then spend some time with the kids doing their, helping them with their homework. And the, with all the project works that they had from school, she would sit down and maybe sometimes late in the night, they, she's, you know, helping them to do their work. And the next morning she'll get up and ready to go for work again. So she was such a, a, a person who really took care, a very, took care of the home. She uh, did everything. Uh, she put the kids in school. She would drive them to school, bring them, you know, bring them back. She did, um, she took care of everything. And I didn't have to worry about anything at home because she was doing everything for me. And she helped me out in my medical practice as uh, office manager. And, you know, when, when she was there, I had a lot of patients that, um, that would come. I would treat them with their medical issues and give them, uh, you know, whatever treatment that I have to give. But then many times they would have had other issues in their life, emotional, uh, family issues. They're going through um, depression. And, and I would take them to Kunimal's room in the clinic, and she would counsel them. She would pray for them. And many times, many of these patients, they, uh, they used to come to the office not to just see me. They came straight to Kunyol's office and sat down, and she would spend time with them, praying for them, and they would tell them all their issues that they have. And they, you know, when they leave the office, they are comforted. And you know that, you know, her ministry uh, was a very, you know, God used her in the office, taking care of patients too. And I really. Um, I, she had a real burden for people, and she was concerned about their issues. And I thank God that she helped me out during those times. And I just wanted to um, talk about uh, cooking. She was a great cook. She learned, but she learned her cooking, uh, all her cooking skills when we first moved to the U.S. to live in New York. And I remember on her way home, before I could get, get home, she would stop in uh, from work. She would stop in a grocery store, buy a few cans of uh, usually the chickpeas, you know, that uh, she knew that I liked it. And she used to buy sardines in cans and bring it home. And she was a fast cook, but she was just learning. And so she was putting uh, ingredients, uh, spices, and all that. And within 40, 45 minutes, she would have a, a tasty dinner. We'll have uh, the vegetable kutan and then a Kerala fish curry with sardines and also some papadam. Papadam also will be there. And we would have, uh, I would come and we would have a tasty Indian dinner. But, you know, she uh, did all this um, she tried all this food on me because I was a guinea pig at that time. And she, you know, she, you know, she asked me, uh, was there anything that I should have added or, you know, uh, whether there was more salt, more salt or less salt, you know. So uh, later on, over the, over the time, over time, she became a very good cook. And everybody, a lot of people, who, when we had meetings in, in our house in New York, people will enjoy our food. And then uh, everybody would say, you're a great cook. But never did they realize that, they, that she became a great cook because of me. And they, di they did not give me the credit for that, yeah. you know? And so, um, you know, she was, she was a good entertainer. She used to get people home and, you know, just to, you know, spend time with people and have um, a fellowship. And, you know, and then we also made a lot of road trips, you know, whenever on vacation, when we get some vacation time, we go on a long road trip and we would go to different places um, from, I think we have driven a lot because we had a lot of family members that would join us. 
And uh, even um, even during with Frisco Faith Fellowship, we have gone so many places. And um, so one of these trips uh, was a scary one, I'll tell you. But God delivered us from a very serious situation that could have happened when we drove from we drove from Tulsa to Los Angeles, a 1,400 mile trip. And then on the way back, driving through the, uh, we were driving through northern Arizona, where there's a lot of forests, a lot of mountains. And we were driving through this thick mountain uh, uh, forest over, over, the, over the hills and mountains there. And, and it, was mid, it, was coming to, it was midnight. I had thought I had enough gas to reach the next uh, town. And those days, we didn't have any navigation aids or cell phones. It was a long time ago. It was in the eight, early 90s, you know. So we were driving through this, through this particular area, and it was midnight, and it was a snowstorm started coming, you know, from suddenly just out of the blue. We started seeing snow as big as snowflakes, as big as a golf ball were just falling all over us. And there was, to make things worse, our gas tank was showing empty. And it was in the middle of nowhere, and I could see no signs of any civilization anywhere. It was, it was just dark, and pine trees all over the mountain slopes. And, you know, you know and I turned to Kunyua and said, look, I think, the first thing, the word, first sentence I told, Kunyumo, we are all going to die today. <laughs> it is, we are going to freeze. Yeah. We are going to be stuck in some, because of the snow, we would probably get stuck somewhere, and we are all going to die. You know, she, she never panicked. You know, that's one thing about her. She never panicked, even when she was bad news. And then she told Achatra, God is there. We are going to pray. And she was in this backseat and praying, Lord, oh, help us. I knew that because if we are not able to get, we can't reach the next gas station. We're going to be stuck somewhere. And we didn't have warm clothing. It was snowing. And we're going to be, it's, it's be all over. And then what happened was the, I was driving by and I saw some cars that had slipped off the highway and fallen in ditches and th with snow almost half covering them, they couldn't get out. I mean, they were, I think the car was left there and they left, and came out of the car and probably uh, left. But I, when I saw those cars there, I thought, Maybe, you know, we're going to be, you know, it's an accident can happen and we might end up in one of these ditches and we are stuck and we are gone. You know what, as we, as she prayed, as we just climbed up that mountain, the top of the mountain and just turned around and started going down, we saw a, a small town with one gas station and motel. And... We immediately went there, and the, the motel clerk said, you're lucky, sir. This is, there's only one room available. And everybody has been getting into, you know, because nobody wanted to drive in that heavy snowstorm. The motel was full. And, but God kept, us, kept one room for us to stay that night. So I, I knew that God answered a prayer, because otherwise we would have been in big trouble that day. So everywhere, you know, I saw the hand of God with their life. And as I said, her faith is what kept going. And another thing, as, he's, as this song says, I, because he lives, I can't face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. She had no fears about the tomorrows. She never... She never worried about tomorrow, you know. 
She knew in the deepest core of her heart she was safe in the hands of God who holds our tomorrows. Mm -hmm. So she was never worried. I never seen any fear on her face, any anxiety, you know. It was a great life. She was living a, 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 a I think it was a supernatural fate because I think as human beings, we all get daunted by things that happen around us and we get scared. But you know, I think there's an extreme faith that she had that she didn't have to fear because God was in total control of everything. And I, you know, um, I know that she's, She's, she's not here at this time. I'm going to miss her so much. And, you know, I have been blessed by her life so much. I really, uh, I cannot explain how much I, I miss her so much. You know, even when she came on hospice, I was still debating, why don't we go back, uh, revoke the hospice and get back, and maybe God will give another another few months, I, I, I was not ready to let go. I was still fighting. I wanted to hold her. I wanted to let, not let go. But God had other plans. I think it was God's perfect timing. God is, never makes mistakes. God is in control. So I think in God's time, God took away, you know, to be with him. And I, I thank, you know, I thank God for everything that he you know, he took control of every, everything in our life. And I think, as the Bible says, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. And today, as we see, it is God's plan that she had to go, to go, had to go back to heaven, go back to be with him. So I wanted to tell Kunimol, Kunimol, I miss you. I'm, I don't know what I'm going to do without you, but I know that you fought a good fight. You kept the, you, you kept the, you ran the race, and and for and for you, there's laid a. You fought a good fight. You ran the race, and you kept the faith. Now we have a crown of righteousness that's laid up for you for, from God. And as the word of God says in Daniel chapter 12, verse 13, as for you, go your way till the end. You will rest. At the end of the days, you will rise to receive your inheritance. Mm -hmm. This morning, I don't want to say goodbye, Kunimol, because one glorious morning on eternity will dawn and we'll meet you there, and I want to see you in perfect health. I know you're going to be in perfect health. You are in perfect health there, worshiping and glorifying God, and I'm waiting for that day when I see you back, when I see you on that beautiful show. Thank God, and I want to thank every one of you who are able to make, to come to, come, you know, yesterday and today to celebrate the life of Kunimo. And I want to thank the Metro Church and, and the, you know, the, all the church families, the, the Pastor Satish, Pastor Joes, and all the pastors. I want to thank you immensely because you did, a, you did so much for us. And there are so many that I want to thank. And, uh, you know, let let God continue to give us peace during this time. We need the peace of God to continue to help my children and help me as we, as we continue with this life. And I want all of you to continue to pray for us and let, the, let, let, God's, let God be glorified in everything that we do and help, and help each of us to be prepared for that final day when we have to leave this world and uh, and pa 
pass away. So let us all prepare for that and get ready for that day. Thank you. There's there so many memories uh, with regard to Auntie for the last several years, almost a decade that we have known each other as a family. In 2007 is the first time we met uh, Dr. Uncle and Auntie. Um, Johan, our son, was sick. Uh, the clinician told me, uh, you want to take him to a doctor, I can, I can give you a number. And I called, and Auntie's the one who picked up the phone, and we went to the Mesquite office. And uh, she, as Uncle said, she was office manager. She walked, in, walked us in. She spoke to us. And we got to know each other. And then, of course, we saw uh, Uncle with uh, Johan. He prescribed some medication, but we spent a lot more time there because we were talking to Andy, talking to Pastor Joey also. So that was the first time we met this family. But after uh, several years from then, you know, they started coming to Metro, and we got to, got to know each other more. In 2011, she introduced me for the first time to her older brother, Reverend Dr. K.K. John. Got the opportunity. I'm really thankful to God uh, for Auntie for introducing me to that brother of her. Because over a period of time, you know, we, we, we hit a good bond of friendship and fellowship. He's much more senior than me, um, but I, he began to mentor me. I, there were times in life that I would call him and he would, he would, he would speak to me and we would speak for uh, hours on the phone, which nobody knows. And I can tell you, this is again, this is again because of her. Otherwise, I never knew Pastor K.K. John. I didn't know anything about the history of his fellowship with Church of God, nothing. But it was because of Kunjumol Auntie that I got introduced to him. And whenever he's in town, she would love him to come and uh, be with us for worship. And he got to speak several times in the church. And every time we have enjoyed that. A few years back when he was here, we, we washed each other's feet. You know, um, I consider those as very great moments in my life. And I'll just tell you, in two, 2013, when Kerala Church of God was celebrating R.F. Cook's uh, centennial year, 100 years of R.F. Cook coming, coming to Kerala, you know, Pastor K.K. John, and this is a story that no one knows, that's why I'm just sharing, you know. I mean, he, he sent me a love gift and said, Pastor, I cannot make it to India. I cannot go to Kerala, but I want you to go. Uh, because I was, not in, I was not planning to go. But he sent me the love gift and said, I cannot go, but you must go, and uh, you must represent me also there. Um, again, it all goes back to whom? To Kunjumolanti and her, her desire that we should. So I'm really thankful to uh, God for that, that fellowship. We went to Israel in 2016 early. That was a great time. In, while in Israel, you know, uh, somebody was saying yesterday, anti blood sugar has always been a matter of concern. Um, I don't want to go to the numbers. But while she was in Israel, uncle, every day I will ask uncle, uncle, how is her sugar level? How is it 110, 120? Wow. So maybe she wants to live in Israel, maybe more, you know? Because all through that uh, several days that we were there together, walking all these places, visiting, you know, uh, walking in the paths of where Jesus walked, it was an amazing journey. And she said, you know, that was one of her desire. That was one of her desire for a long time to go as family. And Uncle Joshua and Auntie, we all were. And the next time, she said, Pastor, now we want to go to Europe. We want to go trace the footsteps of Paul. I said, good, sign me up. So then there was another time I made an announcement. We are going to Israel for a second time. You know what? She said, I'm... Put me down there. I, I want to come back. I want to visit Israel a second time. That journey never took place. Um, in the month of May, March, uh, May is when you know our birthdays, uncle's birthday and my birthday. So a couple of times we got to celebrate our birthdays together. In 2016, uh, so funny that we were at Pluckers. Uh, I mean, you know that she, you, she loves to eat good food. And I mean, we were in Pluckers and we were ordering food. We looked at the menu there and we, there's a burger called Bypass Burger. For those who have gone to Pluckers, you know it. And, uh, and he said, I want to eat a by bypass burger. We said, okay. So she ordered a bypass burger. Little did we know that in a month's time from then, she did have a bypass <laughs> And one day, one day after the year, one day later, yeah, she was in the hospital. And eventually, she had to have a bypass done, a double bypass, as Lisa said. And uh, then she also coded that same week. I mean, that was a really bad time. We thought that she had, we had lost her. But since then, you know, 2016, uh, every time we joke, we all say, Andy, let's go and have a bypass burger. <laughs> and she would always smile. She would always laugh at that joke. Um, um, and she lived a fun, fun life, you know. That, that, was, that was absolutely, I mean, even the last one week, you know, whenever we met her on th Thanksgiving night when you were talking that, Uncle was praying, you know, at least give me one more opportunity that she will open her eyes. And like late that night, we could see that her smiling and 
the, the jokes that we were sharing or, you know, she was smiling at all those jokes and uh, she was also trying to speak and uh, share in that, that fun moment. Uh, we really thank God for her blessed life. Uh, yes, indeed, we are going to definitely miss her here. Her, her, her physical presence will be missed here um, just to see her. And we, we always would say in church, she was a walking miracle. She was a walking miracle. She defied medical science so many times. And she lived it all for God's glory. You know, I want to share a scripture passage. I told yesterday evening that I'm her favorite, favorite pastor. Did I say that? Yeah. <laughs> now, so many have claimed those titles, so I don't want to go into that title. But uh, let, me, let me share uh, from Second, Second Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 5 to 10. I don't have time to go into the details of that passage. Second Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 5 to 10 is a passage that I chose. You know, the, both, both the letters of Paul to the church at Thessalonica, where Paul's, uh, we've been doing this in our fasting prayer on Friday for the last several months. And we, what a great joy to learn this, uh, this book. And uh, Paul talks about the second coming of Jesus and all those that will happen because this church needed that, uh, that, uh, that, that teaching. But in, in chapter two, in chapter one, verse five to 10, uh, Paul talks about, you know, the, the grand perspective of things, the great scheme of things, uh, what is going to happen hereafter. There are several things to be shared from that passage, but uh, uh, lack of time. I'm just going, there is, this is the first thing Paul says. There will be a great revealing that is going to take place. A great revealing. Jesus will be revealed in the last days. In a true apocalyptic literature style, mighty angels and flaming fire, Jesus is going to come back. He's going to be revealed. He's going to be coming back. Parousia. Apocalypse says you'd say any of these words all talking about the second coming which will be happening. So Paul is saying get that grand picture in your heart about his coming. Because the church at Thessalonica is a little bit of concern about the suffering that they are enduring. The, the afflictions that they are going through in their life. And Paul is continuing to encourage them by saying that we are destined for this. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 3 verse 7 he reminded the church we are destined for afflictions and uh, all kinds of troubles, but don't give up. Don't give up, you know. Look for the grand scheme of things. Jesus is going to come, and when he comes, all this pain, all this suffering, all these afflictions and troubles, it will come to an end. Hallelujah. Jesus himself spoke about his coming back, and uncle quoted it from John chapter 14. Jesus said, I'm going to prepare a place. If there be no such a place that I'm going to prepare, I would have told you so. But that's not the only thing that he's going to prepare a place. He said, when the place is prepared, I am going to come back again to take you to myself so that where I am, there you may be also. What a blessed promise that we have living in the grand scheme of things about the great coming back of Jesus Christ. But then that is not the only thing. Paul continues to say, there will be a great rewarding that is going to take place. Great rewarding will take place. Reward will be in the form of retribution for some. And reward will be in the form of rest and relief for some. Paul mentions in that five verses, two kinds of people. Then there are those who do not obey God. There are those who do not obey the gospel of Jesus Christ. There are those who afflict God's people. For them, Paul says, hallelujah, they will be repaid with affliction. They will be dealt with retribution. They will be given the penalty of eternal destruction. And they will be banished from the presence of the Lord. All in these five verses that you read. That's a scary picture. It's a scary picture of someone who has not obeyed God, has not obeyed the gospel. But on the other hand, contrary, but for those who have obeyed gospel, who have, who have known God, it's a beautiful picture. It's a picture of rest. It's a picture of relaxation. It's a picture of relief that is coming to them. It's a reward of a relief. And when we... Look about the life, think about the life of Anna and T. Because she understood what gospel is all about, because she understood who Jesus is all about, because she accepted her as a personal Lord and Savior, we can indeed boldly say this, this morning that she is indeed worthy to receive the crown of righteousness that awaits her, the reward of rest and relaxation. Yes, in her life, the last several years, it has been difficult years, painful years, suffering, afflictions, but she never gave up hope. Every time you met her, she said, God is with me. God is with me. That was one of her statements. Emmanuel, the one who says, I am God, 
of your rescue, the nearness of that God she was able to experience in her life. Always, always. Friends, history is moving to its climax. And God's people who will endure the suffering will have the final triumph because ultimately the final word belongs to the Alpha and the Omega, the one who said, I am the beginning and the end. Hallelujah. And Uncle read that from Daniel 12, 13 already, so I'm not going to repeat that. But in Revelation chapter 14, verse 13, I heard a voice from heaven saying, write this, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Blessed indeed, says the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, for their deeds will follow them. And he fought a good fight as she passed into eternity. Last Wednesday, just about 12, 1230, that time, the family was there, they were praying and singing songs. And when her heart stopped beating, we know for sure that she entered into her heavenly abode at that very moment. No struggle, so peaceful and so calm. But Paul says, one of the, one of the rewards that you will, you will receive is that you will be glorified. Christ will be glorified in you. Christ will be glorified in you. In the Old Testament, Moses prayed, show me your glory. In the New Testament church, we even today pray, Lord, let your glory come down. But you know, in the grand scheme of God's plan, on that day, Christ will be glorified in us. The beautiful analogy that you can bring is like a bulb's filament. When the electricity passes through it, it burns the same way. Her body is going to be electrified at the coming of Jesus Christ. He's going to be glorified. Christ is going to be magnified and glorified in this moral body. Amen. I, I, try, I believe more than any of the other crowns and cra you know, the rewards that we will receive, it will be this, it will be this moment when we can experience, hallelujah, the glory of Jesus coming to us. And finally, Paul says, there will be great rejoicing. Why? There is wonder, there is amazement, there will be astonishment, there will be marvel that is going on that day. Hallelujah. There will be marvel on that day. The saints are going to rejoice. As Paul has already mentioned, the dead in Christ shall rise. The living will also, hallelujah, will be raptured. And they will all join together. What a great day of rejoicing that would be. And we would wonder, we would marvel. Wow, look at it. We got to hear the gospel. We got to listen to the gospel. We got to believe the gospel. And here we are rejoicing, marveling at what has happened. We're going to sing this song. And I want you all, church, this is a celebration of our life. Hallelujah. Let's sing the song which goes so well. Hallelujah. We always sing that song after our Lord's table. His brothers and sisters are giving kiss to each other, singing this song. What a great day of joy that will be when we all get to heaven. Hallelujah. What a day of rejoicing that will be. Church, would you please stand with me this morning as we, as we sing that song. Let our faith arise because we, along with dear Hannah and Dave, that glorious day when Christ's glory will be magnified in us. Hallelujah. It will be a day of great joy and marveling. Hallelujah. Amazement will fill our hearts. And let's, let's celebrate that. Let's celebrate that. Hallelujah.
rejoicing that would be when we all see Jesus. We will sing and shout the victory. Sing it again. Oh, when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that would be. eulogy. Uh, she had a tremendous life and uh, I would just like to give a little part of all of that. Anna Sam Toyklathu, affectionately known as Kunimal, entered into eternity with God on Wednesday, December 2nd, 2020 at her home in Frisco, Texas, surrounded by her loving husband and children. Anna was born on November 28, 1948 in Chennai, India as the fourth child of Reverend K.K. Krubla and Rachel Krubla. Reverend K.K. Krubla was a benevolent servant of the Lord who planted dozens of churches in Tamil Nadu during his ministry. Anna faithfully served the Lord from a young age as he, she amplified the work of her father with the rest of her family. Anna was an accomplished athlete, winning state accolades in multiple track events including long jump, shot put, pole vault, as well as the 200 meter and 400 meter um, sprint. In 1981, she married the love of her life, Dr. Sam Toyklathu, and they began their journey together in America, and they were blessed with two wonderful children, me, Lisa and Joshua. She dedicated her life to being an incredible wife and mother, she was. Anna was also an integral asset in flourishing her husband's private practice, where she managed his office business as well as met the gamut of emotional, psychological, and spiritual needs of their patients. Her kindness, compassion, and generosity know no bounds. In her life, she was known as a mighty prayer warrior. With unwavering faith, evidencing, evidencing her as an anointed woman of God, Anna spent her life showing the world the love of Jesus through both her words and her actions. Her greatest joy was counseling and encouraging others in their walk with Christ. Her family looks forward to telling future generations about her sacrifice and dedication. Although they are mourning the loss of her physical presence, her mortal coil, they rejoice that she is with the Lord and have faith they will see her again. She is survived by her husband, Dr. Sam Toyklathu, her daughter, Dr. Elizabeth Toyklathu, and her son and daughter-in-law, Joshua and Susan Toyklathu. She is also survived by her living siblings, Amichi, Mary Abraham, my uncle, Daniel, Daniel Kayalath, my aunt, Grace David, and my aunt, Lily Churvathur. Listen to the... Close enough, yeah. more or less. Okay. As well as their spouses, respectively, which are Reverend Emmanuel Abraham, Maureen Kyalith, Pastor David Alvin uh, David, and George Churvatur. No? Okay. That's okay. Additionally, she is survived by her sister in law, Tammy Kyalith, the wife of her late eldest brother and faithful servant of God, Reverend K. John. K. Kayalith. Additionally, she is survived by many adoring nieces, nephews, and other loving family and friends. She was preceded in heaven by her parents and her brother, Reverend Dr. John K. Kayalith, Pastor Joy K. Samuel, and Philip Kayalith. Congratulations to all of you attend this uh, wonderful events. Condolences to the families. I am um, very grateful for this moment. I know Kunjimol before their marriage. I met them in Dallas. 
because I am, my wife is related to uh, Emmanuel family, so we were, we know each other very well. I know Kunyamol personally, I thank God for her ministry, and I thank the Lord for all the families. Let's pray, shall we all stand in the presence of God? Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you and we honor you, my Lord. Thank you for this blessed occasion as we send off your dear daughter to your presence, my Lord. Even though we feel sad in our heart, it is a greatest occasion that we celebrate her life. I thank you for the blessed time that they had together in this family as with the Sam and Lisa and Joshua. Lord, I thank you and I praise you and I honor you for her ministry, what she done in, in this world. Lord, I thank you for this church and the beautiful sanctuary and the pastor and all the members of this church, Lord. As we could say goodbye to her for a while until we meet again in that beautiful shower again. Thank you for the greatest hope we have, my Lord. Let the peace of God be upon every family right now, those who are here and those who are not here, my Lord. Thank you for thy loving kindness and mercies upon us throughout this pandemic time, my Lord. Bless each and every family. Let the peace of God be with us. We ask everything in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, love of our Heavenly Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forever. Amen. God bless you all. Thank you.
Father, we just come before your throne of grace on this day where you have made. Indeed, we're celebrating the homegoing of Anna Auntie Lord. We thank you for the fact that you have been good, not just to her alone, but to every one of us, O oh Lord. We have been blessed by her life and her legacy, Lord Jesus. We're indeed able to stand together and to give you glory and honor for all the things that you have brought her through. It was indeed your hand. So we were able to experience and to see how marvelously, how wonderfully you had indeed created her. The miraculous way you have brought her. So we praise your name this morning, even as we come together in this ceremony, Lord, of her celebration. We thank you for the fact that you have been giving us peace that only comes from you, O Lord. We thank you for the fact that you're going to continue to be with this family, Lord Jesus. Be with the service and help Pastor Lord Jesus, even as he's conducting the service, Lord. Bless every aspect of it, Lord. Allow us to again go back rejoicing, singing your praises, shouting out your name, O oh God, because you ring victorious through our lives as we live in this world. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 We are here at this graveside at this burial place. We stand here because of a curse and a promise. The curse was spoken by our God and Creator after the sin of us man Adam and Eve in the garden. In Genesis 3.19, this is what the Creator God said, By the sweat of your face you shall eat bread till you return to the ground, for out of it you were taken for you are dust, and to dust you shall return. When you think about dear Anna Auntie, you all heard from yesterday and today, her beautiful legacy. Yesterday, Santosh Abraham beautifully portrayed how she continues to live in Joshua and Lisa. And when we were driving also, you know, we were just talking between me and Anita, and we were just sharing you know, what was in her heart to share about Auntie. And one, one thing that she shared was, the joy that Auntie exuberated every time you met her, there was a there was a joy 
you know, contagious joy that one can say, contagious joy. In, in spite of what is going on in her body, she didn't care. She would just be so, so happy, so joyful. And that was because she had received that joy, that peace. And she had, her life itself was precious. So therefore, because she had enjoyed all these things, she was able to give it out to others as well. The other thing that she was saying is, with regard to uncle, you know, for the last 39 years, this month they celebrated for 39 years, you know, being faithful to his covenant promises that he made to her, to be, to be faithful in, in health, to be faithful in life, to be faithful in everything. And the last 39 years, she has been faithful, you know. I was telling uncle this morning, uncle, you set the bar so high for all husbands, how to be, how to love our spouses. So these are some of the thoughts that she wanted to share. And, then, and when we think about Auntie, you know, yes, as the scripture says, she also lived, each one of us lives by, by the sweat, by the sweat of our, of our forehead. But we shall return to dust because we were taken out of it. And to dust we shall return. Who can deliver us from the shackles of death? Who can save us from this curse? You know, this is a season, December, where the whole Christian world celebrates the arrival of Jesus known as the Advent, the first coming of Jesus Christ. Yesterday also we were able to sing the song, Joy to the World. And in, in one of the stanzas of the song it says, No more let sins and sorrows grow, nor thorns infest the ground. He comes to make his blessing flow, far as a curse is found. Far as a curse is found. Who? It is only through Jesus who takes away the curse that was pronounced by his father in the garden last week. Last Wednesday, she went to be with the Lord. The previous Wednesday, just a week before, we were able to celebrate with her once more that, that confidence that we had, the basis of our hope to celebrate the Lord's table along with her. And she, she was so joyous to take part of that. We celebrated with her. Because on the one hand, we know that, yes, imminent death could be there at any moment, but then we were also celebrating life. The life that is promised to us, an eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Listen to what Jesus said in Gospel of John chapter 6, verse 56 and 57. Whoever feeds on my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me and I in him. As the living Father sent me and I live because of the Father, so whoever feeds on me, he will also live because of me. Jesus saying to Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, though an IT you die, yet you shall live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Shall never die. That's the promise. So the curse was reversed in the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And he pro proclaims to us the blessing that awaits us. Hallelujah. We're going to take some reading from the scripture which gives us what will this be like? How will it, this be like, this resurrection? Paul writes in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 12. 14 to 26, the basis of our resurrection hope. And Brother Alex Matthew is going to read that. And if Christ has not been raised, our preaching is useless, and so is your faith. More than that, we then found to be false witnesses about God, for we have just testified about God that he raised Christ from the dead. But he did not raise him if in fact the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised either. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile, and you are still in your sins. Then those also who have fallen asleep in Christ are lost. If only for this life we have hope in Christ, we are to be pitied more than all men. But Christ has indeed been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through a man, the resurrection of the dead comes from through a man. For as in Adam, all die, so in Christ all will be made alive. But each in his own turn, Christ the first fruits, then when he comes, then those who belong to him. Then the end will come when he hands over the kingdom to God the Father after he has destroyed the dominion, authority, and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. Amen. Hallelujah. Listen to what Paul is saying. Just because in Adam, because of his sin, all die through Jesus Christ and his resurrection, those who believe in Jesus will also 
be raised up in the last day. Christ, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep, and then by Christ and through Christ, we who have believed in Jesus Christ. In the second reading, Dr. Pramod is going to read from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 35 to 49, Paul argues what would be the nature of this resurrected body. But if, some, if someone will ask, how are the dead raised? With what kind of body will they come? How foolish. What you sow does not come to life unless it dies. When you sow, you do not plant a body that will be, but just a seed, perhaps of wheat or something else. But God gives it a body as he has determined, and to each kind of seed he gives its own body. Not all flesh is the same. People have one kind of flesh, animals have another, birds another, and fish another. There are also heavenly bodies and there are earthly bodies, but the splendor of the heavenly bodies is one kind and the splendor of the earthly bodies is another. The sun has one kind of splendor, the moon another, and the stars another, and the stars differ from star in splendor. So will it be with the resurrection of the dead. The body that is sown is perishable, it is raised imperishable. It is sown in dishonor, it is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, it is raised in power. It is sown a natural body, it is raised a spiritual body. If there is a natural body, there is also a spiritual body. So it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being, and the last Adam, a life-giving spirit. The spiritual did not come first, but the natural, and after the spiritual. The first man was of the dust of the earth, the second man is of the heaven. As was the earthly man, so are those who are of the earth, and as is the heavenly man, so are also those who are of heaven. And just as we have borne the image of the earthly man, so shall we bear the image of the heavenly man. Amen. We shall bear the image of the heavenly man. That heavenly man is none other than our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So in the light of this truth, in the light of this truth, the third reading, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 50 to 58, Brother Bishop Thomas is going to read, Aware of these truths, what shall be our response to death and what shall be our response to in ministry and life. I declare to you, brothers, that, the, that flesh and bl blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but, but we will all be changed. In a flash, in a twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised imperishable Amen. and we will be changed yes. for the perishable must clothe itself with the imperishable and the mortal with immortality when the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable and the mortal with immort immortality then the saying that is written will come true death has been swallowed up in victory where O death is your victory where O death is your sting yes. the sting of death is sin and the power of sin is the Lord. But thanks to be the Lord, He gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my dear brothers, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourself fully to the work of the Lord, because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Amen. Hallelujah, church. This afternoon when we are here, we know what is sown is in perishable but what is going to be raised is imperishable what is sown in dishonor is going to be raised in honor and glory thanks be to god who gives us victory through jesus christ can we give thanks to god this afternoon lifting up our hands and saying lord we thank you for a life that was well lived and we know for sure because of the hope of resurrection that this perishable body will one day be raised imperishable in honor lord in glory so that we all will rejoice together hallelujah therefore sam uncle therefore lisa therefore joshua and susan hallelujah be steadfast immovable always abounding in the work of the lord knowing that that the work in the lord hallelujah your labor is not in vain the legacy that your mom has given to you continue on the legacy live that legacy for the glory of god hallelujah our last reading is taken hallelujah in the book of Revelation, chapter 21, verse 1 to 7, Pastor Joe Sarikat is going to read. This gives us the blessed hope that one day our tears 
there will no longer be any more tear. Death itself will be removed and abolished forever. Now I saw a new heaven and new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth have passed away. Also there was no more sea. Then I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. Then he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said to me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. And I will give of the fountain of the water of life freely to him who thirsts. He who overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. When the roll is called up yonder, 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 Dear Anna Angie, for the last 72 years of the Lord God gave you on the face of this earth, you lived a beautiful life. You lived the life of a daughter, of a wife, of a mother, and you had owned many roles. Even though in the last several years you were sick, and you never gave up your hope in the Lord. You continue to trust in the Lord God and your Savior, Jesus Christ. So even though we are here grieving on the one, one hand, but we also rejoice because you were able to meet your Creator last Wednesday. And along with others who preceded you in death, your parents, your brothers, you are rejoicing in the heavenly company. So this morning, this afternoon, knowing that fact, and knowing that you labored hard for the Lord, and you are resting now in His presence. And one day, you will be raised gloriously on the day of resurrection, when the saints of Jesus Christ will be gathered together, and those who are alive will be transformed, since you were taken out of dust, and to dust thou shalt return. And because of the promise that Jesus gave, that I am the resurrection and the life, this morning, this afternoon, in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, we commit you dust to dust and sand to sand. Hallelujah. Awaiting your glorious resurrection on that beautiful day. Hallelujah. Sandoche, Metreo Sandoche, Metreo Sandoche. 
Father, we come to you now in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. And Holy Spirit, we thank you now so much for your presence even here. Father, we, we do not question your timing. We do not question your sovereignty. But we trust in your will and in your way. And so we ask, Father, that you would be a guide, a comfort from the, for the days ahead. Lord, I pray for Dr. Sam Uncle now, Lord that you would walk alongside him, that your presence would be so near to him every step of the way, Lord. Over Lisa, over Josh, over Susan, over Emmanuel, Uncle, Mary, Auntie, and the rest of the family, Lord Jesus, that they would experience a peace that passeth all understanding, Lord. One that they cannot explain, Lord, as Holy Spirit as you walk with them. Even if we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, there you are with us in your rod and your staff. They comfort us. So, Great Shepherd, I ask that you would continue to be with this family. And he even here, Lord, among death, Lord, we are reminded of the redemptive work of Jesus Christ. Amen. That the death has been defeated and the grave has been overcome. Yes, yes. And even if we have grief, Lord, we have great hope knowing one day we will all see each other again, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for what you've done, Lord. And Anna and we know, we know that we will see you one day. Yes. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you reminded us that you are you are going to the Father and you're preparing many, many mansions, many rooms for all of us. And one day you're coming back to get us out. And until that day, Lord, walk with us, be with us. And we can't wait till we're all reun re reunified again, Lord Jesus, in heaven. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for this time. We thank you, Lord, that you are always near. You are always with us. And Lord, even though we will miss Anna and Tina, we know, God, that you are still good. And we thank you and we praise you. In your matchless name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen.
ഉണ്ടായിരിക്കുമാറാകട്ടെ ഇന്ന് പകൽ കാലം നമുക്ക് ജയനന്ദനെ കർത്താവിനെ നമുക്ക് ഒരുമിച്ച് ഒന്ന് സ്തുതിക്കാമല്ലോ സ്നേഹത്തിൽ കടലെന്നാലും പോക 